Well, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Brubble Podcast, a podcast exploring, you know, young voices and perspectives from in and around the Brussels bubble. And each week, or not each week, each month, we, we try to do a special, almost ranking type of episode where we rank random stuff. And this time, I've been persuaded. I've been, you know, my, my arm has been gripped and I've been dragged in again to do, you know, an episode which is close to my heart, but also will probably ruin some of my professional credibility. What do you think, Dan? Uh, I think it will ruin 70 to 80% of your professional credibility. I, I think you'll be able to come back from this, though. Yeah, see, my, my logic is I'm going to release this on April Fool's. That's my plan. That is genius. So this might go well. So if you've seen yeah. the title of this video or this podcast that you're listening to, and if you want to see the video recording we do of this, please check out you know us on YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can even see my beautiful. Is this our dining room? This is my dining room. Not not. You don't live with me here. I kind of refer to you as the person. No. Anyways, before I get ahead of myself, we're doing this on cryptids and other mythical creatures. How do you feel today, Dan? I'm very excited. Uh, obviously, you're kind of the expert on, on this, but I, I've always been a fan as well uh, mm -hmm. of this area. Like, definitely enjoyed watching um, Mystery Hunters. Uh, right. If you remember that show back in the day. Never seen it. Uh, one of the guys on it was actually a great grandson of um, Haiti Selassie, the um, Ethiopian uh, emperor king. Uh, I enjoy watching shows with Bigfoot and, and so on. Uh, and this is going to be a learning experience because obviously I know about some Irish uh, creatures, but like there's a whole variety of things around Europe that uh, I'm excited to discover. Great. Me too. For me personally, some avid followers of my extracurricular activities might know that I used to do a different podcast exploring some of the more unexplained phenomena around the world. That was a fun experience. And this harkens back to that. Um, but for the un uninitiated, a cryptid is a creature that people theorize exists, but are not sure whether it does. Uh, so for the hardcore cryptozoologists, or the people who study the existence of, I want to call non-existent animals, these are typically creatures which, you know, are reasonable. However, there are also some creatures that, you know, dive into the realm of you know, myths and skepticism mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Fantasy. Yes, fantasy. A good call out. So for instance, I don't know, something like the Loch Ness Monster, which we'll get to. It's somewhat believable that it could have existed, right? Yeah. It could it's, have it's been based, a remnant. It's based on a real animal yeah. in some ways, yeah. But then there's some, like, demigods. That's less of a cryptid. Mm -hmm. But for the purpose of this video, cryptids and mythical creatures, we're going to stick a bit more towards cryptids. And because we're based in the Brussels bubble, you know, we're in Brussels, these are going to be European cryptids. So each yeah. of these has, you know, a reasonable tie to Europe. This is like your vision but with Bigfoot. <laughs> true, true, that's, true. That's why I'm seeing it this evening. Uh, well, without much further ado, oh, and again, if you're not familiar with the format, really quickly, we chose 32 European cryptids and mythical creatures, and then randomly, and I stress randomly, these were selected to order they are, and they'll be facing off one against each other until we have one, which is the best. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean to be a good cryptid, Dan? What does it mean to be a good cryptid? Uh, I think plausibility... Right. Is, is, is good like you know I think if it's too fantastical then I'm going to be skeptical uh, I also think like uniqueness yeah uh, probably mentioned this on other podcasts you know I like things to be unique so like there, there are certain like categories of cryptids uh, that definitely reoccur yeah. and, and there's like for instance every lake basically has a lake monster yeah and Very true. So I try to avoid having repeats of non-unique lake monsters. Mm -hmm. So I did try to, you know, if mm -hmm. you see this list by the end, it's a bit, you know, varied. So hopefully... Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I think having seen a preliminary list, I think it's a good variety. And I think, uh, yeah, I think like a good story is, as well will, will really help sell it. Like, yeah. if uh, the, the older, the better, uh, I would think, rather than something that's been... A good story, I say, holding up my notes. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so something like that that has been around for a long time is in like the the history of an area rather than just like someone claimed they saw this when they were drunk fifty years ago. There might be a few. Of those There'll in be there. a couple, I, I, and and that's you know that's going to happen with thirty two. But yeah, World Cup style uh, knockout bracket, uh, and yeah, I think let's just have some fun. Perfect. Well, first first matchup, uh. A classic one, almost, I would say. I say as I'm zooming in poorly onto this one. It's Le Bête de Jevedon, uh, the Beast of Jevedon, which is a French, you know, territory, versus Owlman. 
Have you heard of either of these? Uh, I yeah, I, I I've heard a little bit de de uh, vaguely, and I, and I had a French colleague mention this when I was kind of doing my informal research mm-hmm. in recent weeks. Uh, Elman, no, uh, it does kind of sound like a knockoff superhero of some kind. Isn't one of the Watchmen owl yeah. based? One of them, yeah, I think he is called Owlman. He might be called Owlman, yeah. Who yeah. was a knockoff of Batman to begin exactly. with. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a night based creature. Yeah. Uh, and the, the photo is, is pretty funny, I gotta say. <laughs> well, photo, it's more of yeah, an yeah. illustration. Oh, he's the drawing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, regale me with the tale of, of these two creatures. So, I'll start with Owlman, because we lingered on him for a second. So, Owlman, you know. In the, in the 1970s or so, 1960s, mm-hmm. uh, this one guy took his children. They were on vacation to the Cornish town of Mawan in the UK. A small town. The guy let his children go wander around in a graveyard. And they get spooked by the, by the sight of a supernatural beast the size of a human, but the head of an owl and the wings of an owl. Mm, excellent start. Yes. Excellent start. Okay. Anyways, they ran back terrified. And yeah. then the, the, the same day, this guy, uh, do I have his name? Uh, but the, the girls were called uh, June and Vicky Melling, you know, typical names. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the same day, he, their father runs into a famous, renowned uh, magician uh, named... Uh, Paul Daniels? Tony Doc Shields. Don't know who that is. Okay, yes. keep going. But he was also known to, you know, be a monster hunter. And mm, the guy was right. instantly like, oh, did you scare my daughters? And he's like, of course not. And then he spread the legend of Owlman. And since then, he's been spotted by 12 other people in this small town, um, you know, in various, you know, locations and locales, ghoulishly wandering around. So not in flight? Uh, I think spreading his wings a bit. I don't know if he's actually been flying or not. Yeah, because, like, if, if he's not flying, then it, it sounds like he's just some dude yeah. who's dressed up. And the fact that he met a magician <laughs> who was known... This is like a Scooby-Doo situation... In the first scene, you meet the guy at the end who turns out to be Owl Man. They rip off the owl head. They're yeah. like, Tony! Like, it's... In no, Doc. Capacity. You can by Doc. So, sorry, Doc. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's not a great start, I gotta say. Uh, but, even though there has, been more, there has been more than one sighting, which is good. But there's a lineage to Owl Man. The last thing I want to put in... And this might okay. be a long episode to the people watching. I, I gotta apologize yeah. in the beginning. Buckle up. <laughs> yes. Buckle up, is what yeah. I say. Uh, so there was... A theory that he's related to Mothman, if you know of Mothman. Yeah, the Mothman f- is definitely more famous. Yeah, yeah the famous cryptid. Anyways, the, the sightings of Mothman allegedly stopped for a while around mm-hmm. the 70s, you know? Which coincides when the sightings of Owlman began. So we think he went for <laughs> a nice... Damn it. He crossed the Atlantic, you're saying? A nice Cornish vacation. Oh my god, he flew across the ocean <laughs> to Cornwall. I guess, I thought it was the... Uh, oh yeah, Owlman... Has not had a movie with Richard Gere yet, uh, mm. so clearly Doc needs to step up his branding game. I guess so. Uh, but okay, yeah, Old Man, that, that that that's kind of a, a, on the goofier end of cryptids. I think Le Bête de Gévaudan is a bit darker. So we yeah, a bit less of a hoot, if you would. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, bravo, bravo. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, Le Bête de Gévaudan uh, was he emerged in the in the late 16th, late, late 18th century, so from 1764 to 1767, this was a large wolf. Uh, so it stood, you know, the size of a cow slash horse, according to accounts. Wow. Um, the, the tail longer than a wolf, it was rumored to be invulnerable. And what made it especially, you know, scary, because people saw this thing out around all the time, it was not afraid of men. So it would just come up and, you know, attack. And what it loved the most, it loved killing, eating, especially, you know, young children. Um, well, they're, they're the weakest, so that kind of makes sense. Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. So anyways, allegedly, guess how many people this has been killed? Oh, it's like a crazy number. It was like 200 or something? 210 attacks is what he's a- attributed to. Yeah. 113 deaths um, and 49 injuries. And of those deaths, 98 were partially eaten. Oof, missing limbs. Okay, not fun, not fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, That that is... Uh, like, that must be a record for, like, a single animal. Yeah, yeah, like and it, 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 by, the, by the first year of his activity, it started to raise some heads. So what happened eventually is that the king got word of his people being terrified of this mm-hmm. giant wolf going around <laughs> and yeah. eating all their wives and children, I right? I see why, yeah. So, but he did the rational thing, and he sent, you know, a few of his 
troops over to, to lead an expedition. And they actually shot a few times at it. They were really close to killing it. But apparently the locals just didn't like him and didn't cooperate. So these guys failed, came back. And then the king, you know, because he was getting a lot of bad press from the Brits, you know, being like, oh, we got a wolf running around killing people. He sent some professional wolf hunters over there. Um, and then they failed again. And then he sent another pair and they failed too. And then finally, one of these professional wolf hunters shot a wolf. And then they brought it all the way back to Paris, into Versailles, displayed it proudly. Um, killing stopped. Two months later, they began again. There we go. There yeah. we go. And yeah. then at, at this point, the king didn't want to invest any more resources because it was a bit of an embarrassment, right? Mm -hmm. So it kind of just... La, la bêtise du yeah. at that point. Anyways, eventually, he did get killed. Uh, some local came up and allegedly killed a big wolf with a... With a bullet made out of silver. Because, you know, uh, it's an invulnerable of feature. Of course. And then the, the killings kind of stopped. But yeah. anyway, it's super famous for the French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Personally, I'm le leaning the Bête de Gévaudon. Oh, yeah. Elman El 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 is lucky to be here. Elman El El is that guy on a game show who's like, you know, I've had a great time. <laughs> uh, everyone's been so nice to me. But, you know, you're not going to pass the first round, buddy. Sorry. But Le Bête de Gévaudon prowls its way forward. Yeah, yeah. And I think, uh, I think as we get into this list a bit more, as we get into this list a bit more, I have a few more facts about you know the possible you know explanations behind mm -hmm. Le Bête de Gévaudan and stuff like that. So, it was Tony Dark Shields. <laughs> yes, dressed as a giant wolf. Anyways, moving on to the next little coupling, we have the Tutsa worm hailing from the Swiss Alps or also the Austrian and German Alps versus the Brussels parrots hailing from our. Hometown of Brussels. Indeed, adopted hometown. And Any off camera, there's a terrifying creature, which is Simon's cat, has come downstairs as well. Yeah, we'll yeah. see if he sneaks in here, the, the uh, Tutsa yeah. worm of our house. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, yeah, tell me about the Brussels parrots. Brussels parrots first? Okay, um, apparently, they, uh, a zookeeper wanted to add some color to the city in okay. the 1980s and let loose 20 of them. Seems irresponsible from a zookeeper. I I thought so too, to be honest. I guess maybe it was like a, uh, like someone who just got fired. It, but I think they had his name. I saw some article. I, I didn't write down his name. I, I refuse to write in French. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, they're out there, and there's some. You know, these might be less mythical than the rest. I thought it'd just be a fun shout because it takes yeah. a while to spot them, but once you spot them, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's about ten to twenty thousand of them in Brussels. Damn, I don't think I've ever seen one. You've never seen them, so you don't know. If, so these are really encrypted to you. For me, yeah, for me it is, yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah, I'm going to start seeing them everywhere. Yeah, if you yeah. go to any park, there's these little green birds that chirp around, allegedly, I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, they, they flit around and they, they live their lives. And it's kind of a mystery to scientists, is what they say, how they're surviving the cold weathers. Yeah, but they're in London as well, aren't they? Like parakeets and yeah. stuff, so yeah, they just, uh, they're hardy creatures. So uh, good, good for them. And uh, what about the tatzel worm? Yes. So speaking about hearty creatures, um, have you ever heard about dragons in the mountains? Uh, well, in uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Well, about, yeah. it's been a it's been a longer standing trope. So the tatzel mm -hmm. worm is one of the dragons that are found, you know, in the Swiss Alps, so to say. Okay. But this thing is a bit smaller than an actual dragon. It's more like a lizard-like body with the head of a cat or the face of a cat. If you can kind of see this picture of him spooking some guy in a historical illustration. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like, yeah. And a very long neck. As yeah, well. it's like this serpent-like, lizard-like creature. Mm, yeah. Anyways, two to six feet tall, has poisonous breath. Mm -hmm. Adds a bit of character to that. Yeah, nice. Um, he was first seen in 1680 um, after, you know, local Swiss people were noticing that their cow's udders were being sucked dry. Yeah, you know, there was a pervert in the area. Who knows? Yeah, but yeah. then they, they caught this. They killed one of these, and the, the, you know, the, the milk sucking stopped, and that was it. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, but they've been reported throughout like the past few centuries of uh, mm -hmm. farmers seeing them getting heart attacks, dying, that kind of stuff. So, you know, it, it's, it's a scary little creature, although it looks kind of cute here, <laughs> I gotta say. Yeah, exactly. It's more like, grrr. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the Brussels Pirates, nice little shout out for that, but it, it is a real creature, which probably disqualifies it. Yeah. The Tatzel Worm. Uh, well, you haven't seen this real creature. Yeah, but come on. <laughs> I haven't seen many creatures in, in the flesh, but like I, I, I know they exist. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think it has to be the Tatzel Worm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's kind of neat. It, it's like one of these dragons, which I guess it has poisonous breath, you know, it's a bit yeah. mischievous, but it's, it's like two to six feet. It's smaller than I am. Yeah, like at the meeting of dragons, 
Like, uh, like the annual like family reunion, the tassel firm would definitely be the butt of all the jokes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Smoke and, and them would be having like a great laugh at the tassel firm. You'd be seeing at the kids' table, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Even though it's a fully grown adult, it's kind of yeah. embarrassing. If I were to see any dragon, I'd want to see a tassel worm. Even though, yeah. I guess they're, yeah. they're a bit Oh, now we're talking. So we have the next coupling. We have the Echnesis remora, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which if you would describe it, it's a small fish-looking creature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks kind of like, uh, yeah. It Has it got just like a, on top of its brain? Just like It's a big teeth. suction cup. Big suction cup, okay. That could be real for all I know, yeah. It is actually real. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> but there's a there's a mythical version of it hypothesized, but we'll get into it later. Because there's okay. not many small fish we see on these lists, so okay, I yeah. thought of Frodo's in it. And it's up against Outerroda Ohun, which translated from Flemish is Old Red Eyes. Mm -hmm. and what would it be in Dutch? Outerroda Ohun. There we go, but oh one oh. Yeah. Did I misspell this? I might have misspelled this. Well, I don't know. I'm Flemish. Yeah, like, Flemish. Yeah. They don't spell properly. Yeah, anyway, exactly. so yeah, look fine, at their yeah. education system. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> Anyways, Echnesis remora, also known sometimes as mora or Echnesis or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a small fish which has since like the Greek ancient times been, you know, floating around and it sticks to ships and it holds them in place. Okay. Nice. So there's a strength of like boulders and boulders. Like mm -hmm. it just holds you in place. Yeah. Cool, no? That is pretty cool, yeah. Uh, what I love the most when I was researching this is there were a few accounts. I think Marcus Anthony, or Mark Anthony, uh, was one of the ones who, who lost a battle because his ships couldn't move because these fish got stuck to it. They just love the taste of wood, you're telling me. Yeah, I just thought it seemed like a very convenient excuse. <laughs> yeah, like he woke up late and he missed the battle and he's like, oh no, my ship got stuck because of Remora. And they're like, who? And you're like, you know, those, those fish with the big suckers on them. Yeah, it was yeah. described by this ancient, you know, yeah. Pling the Elder, listed in his book of, you know, natural animals. Mm -hmm. So they, yeah. there's some historical record behind it. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's, and there are actually these fish called Echnesis, or more, I think that's a picture of them, who stick to ships. So it is a phenomenon. They just don't, they, we haven't seen them mean as strong yet. Maybe there is one out there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of want them to be that big. Like, if they're the size of a shark or something, then call me. Yeah, they're like, yay big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. But well, still fun, still fun. Good for them. Good for Mora. Yeah. Yeah. Now my boy, old red eyes over here. He's a he's a big black dog with piercing red eyes. But there's a lot of different descriptions about him. He's also known as the Beast of Flanders. Okay. Um, and other descriptions have him more as a werewolf type creature, hmm. where he starts out as a big naked black man and then transforms into a bit of a wolf. And I don't okay. want to look too much further into its legends because they kind of devolve a bit more towards casual Belgian racism towards the end that way. Yeah, that does seem a little bit dodgy. Yeah. Uh, although the Beast of Flanders would be a great nickname for like a like a UFC fighter or something. <laughs> or like a boxer. Yeah. yeah. Stepping into the ring, piercing red eyes. Oh, yeah, yeah, red contact lenses. That would be good, actually. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah the, the, the type of being a large black man, I, I find... Because it, it's it's most prominent on Mechelen. Okay. That's where it really hails around. Yeah. And they have this legend where, you know, a young girl got abducted from her home. Oh, and the beast of Flanders was going to eat her up or whatever. Yeah. Anyways, they, 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 you know, caught it before it got to it. But then the, the, the beast that took her turned into a dog and ran away. Okay. And then they found some homeless black man and skinned him alive for the crime, saying that he was a oh, the beast of Flanders. Excellent, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it has a few nicknames which which sound a lot more like racial slurs than I want to say in this podcast. Yeah, even in Dutch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the, <laughs> and the Dutch have not updated their saying sometimes too much, but... Uh, yeah, it's like Lovecraft's cat, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So do you think that the, the Mora, or the Echnesis, could get through in a technicality? Ah. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. Of a bit more of a, a bit more of a cleaner history. Yeah, like because because the Mora hasn't really done anything, but like it's been it's been accused of a lot of stuff just as like a handy scapegoat, a scape fish, yeah. if you will. Uh, whereas the Outerroda Oja is a little bit uh, sketchy historically. I'm not sure we want to condone that kind of behavior. But I, I, there are a lot of stories about black dogs as mythical creatures. Yeah, and this is the only one I really included on it because at the end of the day, it's a black dog. I don't think mm. that's. That could have encrypted, to be honest. No, no, no. They had to, they had to jazz it up with some racism yeah. and some red eyes. I can yeah. find a black dog hunting my town. 
Yeah, we've got a black cat in this yeah, room. Yeah, exactly. Like, come on. Yeah, somewhere in this room. It's actually yeah, yeah, yeah. very hard to spot because it's black. Yeah, he's around. He's around. I promise. Uh, yeah, so I think Echness is Remora. I think doing well to get get through to the next round, but, uh, you know, let's just see. Let's just see what happens it's next. A, it's progress. Isn't yeah. it? It's stopping my breath in its tracks. Mm. Uh, sorry. <laughs> next up, we have Dia Turl, as some of our longtime hey. viewers might know about. First repeat offender on, on our podcast. This is great. I guess so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, facing up against the, the Brutch All Lugs. I don't think I'm pronouncing that correctly. But my, you know, medieval Swiss is not the greatest. Oh, okay. It's it's Swiss. Okay. Uh, yeah. But, well, Barach, anyway. I'll, yeah, LLGS looks more Welsh to me, but, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to describe the Turl a bit? Uh, well, the Turl, if you remember from our uh, episode about national animals, is a mythical bird. Uh it's basically just a, like a big ass eagle and uh, falcon. They prefer a big ass falcon. Sorry, <laughs> far you, Mister Orban. Uh, it's a big ass falcon, and uh, yeah, you 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 quoted from the website of like the Turl Society, and like they gave like a, like a very Scientology esque story of how the Turl like came from like another planet and stuff, and it was uh, it was pretty funky. I gotta say. Now yeah. I don't know how ha- has there ever been any sightings of the Turl. I mean, it's a big bird, right? It is a big bird, And people like to cling on to the belief that it might have existed in the past and no Mm -hmm. longer exists today in Hungary, which would make it somewhat of a cryptid. Mm -hmm. But I think most accounts do believe it's more of a mythical kind of thing sent down from God, you know, guide the Hungarian people. Like a phoenix. Yeah, a little bit like that. I didn't include phoenixes on this list, actually, but it's a bit too British for my taste, so. That's fair, yeah, Harry Potter and that. I only include Owl Man, so come on. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Owl Man was funny at all. Uh, yeah, so the Turl, um, yeah, like, it's, it's, it's good, it's, it's good, it's, it's not quite, like, kind of cryptid, I guess, yeah, it's kind of fuzzy, but, like, in terms of, like, the, uh, the importance for Hungary, like, the deserves a place. Yeah. You know, and I think it's nice place. to mention, because it's, it's one of those cool things, because I kind of wish we had an almost semi-mythical creature to mm-hmm. represent, you know, my Dutch yeah. or Canadian ancestors. Well, you're going to hear about the Irish one pretty soon, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll see about that. Go. There we go. Uh, and but- Baracha. Yeah, Brach Alux. I, I don't know. It lives in the Lake of Lucerne in Switzerland. Lake Lucerne, it's called. Uh, Lucerne, Lucerne with the CH in the middle. It might be the same as what you think. I'm, I'm going to let viewers believe what they believe. Yeah, sure, yeah. I was kind of confused to see like a sea creature. All right, because it, yeah. like it looks like an octopus. And yeah. I was like, wait a second, in Switzerland? It's, basically it's, landlocked? It's, named, it, it's basically a large shapeless sack with some <laughs> tentacles sticking out. And this picture I have here is not the greatest description, but it has, it's covered also with fiery eyes. Oh, okay. They like an like, angel from the Bible. Yeah, and they can produce flames as well. Damn. And so its whole kind of thing is, is that it can kind of sneak out of the lake and like grab the tentacles to grab people and lure them in. <laughs> yeah. It's confusing. Yeah. Like producing fire while also being like a, an aquatic creature. Yeah. Well, the, the the origins of this creature is that it apparently escaped from hell to go to a lake oh in Switzerland, which that. sounds like a lot of uh, illicit people they have living in Switzerland. But uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of people probably describe Switzerland as hell in certain ways. Uh, I, I mean, if if you relocate me to Switzerland, I I will not complain. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, it, it's kind of nifty. It's what I like about it is it's a sea cryptid that mm-hmm. looks weird. Like yeah, like a yeah. lot of times they're just like lake monsters and stuff, but this is from like yeah. the sixteen hundreds, the seventeen hundreds, and it's just a big sack of eyes and legs and Yeah, yeah. No, I I agree. Yeah, like it's not like they just took like an existing thing yeah. and just kinda of spun it into a story. Like they, they, this took some creative thought and the weird yeah, the uniqueness of it I think, yeah, means it has to go through for me. Okay. I, I would agree so. with that. The tutorial, you know, I guess historical presence, but I think Although I didn't find as much information as I wanted to, but the Barash Alix, I think that's how you say that. Sure. It's Swiss neat. people call in, let us know. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to argue with a creature from hell. Yeah, so. yeah. Next up, we have the Noken yeah. versus Kabouters, or Gnomes, as they're called in English. Or even Gnomes. Ah, oh, yes. Do you oh, yeah. pronounce the G or not? No, we could uh, do not. Uh, well, that's... I'm just going to continue pronouncing the G or just call them kabouters. It's cute. It's cute. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. a spin to my language. Like, uh, what's that there. word? Bison? Oh, or, yeah, the or bison. Yeah, or yeah, sword? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sword, bison. Yeah. And yeah, it's so a few. <laughs> that's uh, the holy trinity of words you could have to say properly. Yeah. Well, uh, first off, have you heard of Nokken? 
It's kind uh, of famous. It's it depicts uh, the picture I have here is of this white, beautiful looking horse. They're also sometimes depicted as you know humans and just spirits. Okay. No, can't say when you're. So it's a Germanic or Scandinavian kind of you know myth where it's like a person, a humanoid creature, which kind of sits by the water. It, it loves sitting by the water and plays music, and people hear the music and they're like, "What is this?" And then they come close to the water and they can't stop going closer, and then they drown. Damn. Okay, so it's like a like a Scandinavian siren. Yeah, kind of like yeah, that. Yeah. But also in Germany, it, it's it's across the regions. Not all of them are called Nocken. They all also have like. I think Nick sees is what the English would call him. There's some other like weird German spelling stuff yeah, like yeah. that. I think actually, I think maybe someone told me about this when I was doing my research. Or maybe yeah. maybe they gave it a different name. Yeah. Uh, but still, yeah, that, that that is interesting. Like I think that is something that you see in different cultures. Like this idea of like a like a temptress siren uh, type kind of creature. Uh, like it's kind of cool to see that kind of replicated across different places. Yeah. Let's say you're caught in their traits. How do you get out? Uh, well, uh, in the Iliad, yeah. Odysseus uh, put uh, wax in his ears. Right. Uh, I don't know. Is it too late in the game? I think that's something they didn't think about. This is a bit more. I think it's newer than the Iliad, but yeah, yeah. But yeah. traditionally, you say its name. If oh, you correctly okay. identify as a nookin, they're like, ah, yeah, yeah. Rats, it's like game it's over. Like, Michael, he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. you got me. Yeah. Well, there goes another. <laughs> and there's also this cool fact where if you bring him like a, a specific you know, set of items, like I think three drops of blood, like a black animal, not my cat, um, and then like some Scandinavian vodka or something. Mm, it's snaps. like, ooh, a gift, and it will teach you some of its music. Oh, okay. Which so always got a transaction. Then you can also like, tempt people to their death. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if you could do it then. But I can teach you the forbidden chords. <laughs> yeah. But the horse I have on here, um, so they also sometimes are, you know, described in horse form, uh, especially by the Faroeans, Faro, Faro people from near Denmark. Far- oh, Faroese. Faroese, sorry, I couldn't read Faroese. my own handwriting. Yeah. But yeah, they're called more, uh, the knifers, I believe is what they call them a lot. Okay. But it's like a supernatural horse, same principle, it mm-hmm. stands by water. And people are like, oh, damn, free horse. <laughs> but they're like, well, typically, that's what's going for my mind. But it, they're like, ooh, a beautiful horse. Let's see if I can come closer and closer. And then you pet it on its back. And by the time you get to its tail, your hand can't let go, and it drags you in the water. Okay, so this one's a bit more active. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Like, I like this one. It's, it's kind of neat, and it's kind of also like a beautiful creature dragging you to your death violently without you. Knowing it. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Faroe Islands bring into darkness. I like it yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the Faroese. I don't know if they have islands. It is. It's the Faroe Islands. Uh, maybe double check that one. But <laughs> the, the place is the Faroe Islands. It's some islands in, uh, in, in the North Sea. Like it. we'll see if I believe that. But uh, <laughs> okay. I do think this is kind of like almost in like a way of people to rationalize drownings and stuff. I think yeah, that, that's yeah. kind of how it came to be. Or like suicide by drowning. True. You know. Yeah. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Uh, so on that happy note, let's turn to gnomes. Kabouters. I love kabouters. Did you grow up with kabouters? I, I feel like it's part of my childhood as somebody who grew up in a Dutch household. Uh, no, no, no. I, I grew up with other creatures. You never had little helpers, like, helping in the field? Uh, no, I didn't <laughs> grow up in the field. Uh, no, we had other creatures, like, you know, in, in the... In the in the air in the ether. So and again, I can discuss those later. But uh, no, kabouters. Tell me all about them. So they're like little people, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, they can live super long. They okay. like marry at a hundred. They live to like four hundred years old. Nice. Yeah, and they're, they're they're tiny. They have their own little houses. They live in uh, they live in uh, uh, toadstools. No, no uh, mushrooms. Yeah, toadstools. Oh, oh yeah, it's a type of mushroom. Ah, uh, yeah. Anyways, yeah, they, they dress like a little gnome. They have, like, little hats, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're basically a little society. Um, they hate humans spying on them. Whoa, okay. And then there they will go. punish you. Guess how they punish you? Oh, how do they punish you? If you were a little gnome and somebody spied on you. Uh, not a gnome, a, a kabouter. Oh, oh. Uh, they would raise a horde of mice upon your house. Good call, because they are close with animals, and yeah. they, they probably would do something like that, but the traditional mm-hmm. punishment is blindness. Oh, that's more extreme. <laughs> yes. That is more extreme. Damn, you have to be prepared to inflict blindness. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of cool. I think they're very yeah. cute. There's like some Dutch children's stories about Pinkeltje is one that I know pretty mm-hmm. prominently, but I'm having yeah. these, all these adventures across the Netherlands, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But the blindness doesn't really play a part in kids' stories. I, so I think I'm here or there, I think my brain skimmed over it. 
Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see why. I There's see a legend. Why. They taught the Dutch how to make wooden shoes. God, what a Crafty legacy. Crafty little things. What and what I love the most, and you can tell it's such a Dutch creation, these little things, they live in their toadstools and stuff, right? Yeah. They go on vacation. <laughs> They go to Nord Vikings, they got a great yeah, They time. go to some willow tree and they hang out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I thought you were going to say that they all cycle. That, that's why they live in Dutch. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, they make, they make tiny bicycles. <laughs> and it's cute. Uh, and then there's also, I guess, the last little fact, because we were dwelling on this one a little long. But uh, Dutch bias. They live in a monarchal society. They have a kings and queens and stuff like that. Damn, King Kabouter. Yeah, That'd Kabouter. That'd be good for a band, actually. King Kabouter. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, they're, 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 there's this really famous tale about one of their kings called Koning uh, Kiri. Mm-hmm. Kairi. Kairi, like the basketball player. Yeah. No relation. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyways, he was shot by a hunter. Um, oh, shit. Near, um, near Brabant. Mm-hmm. And then that's why there's no Kabouters living there anymore, because they all left. Oh, okay, right, yeah, they so, were like, they almost yeah. in protest. Yeah, so they're like, see. we're taking our clogs with us, lads, we're not coming back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, God, this is a tough one, they're both actually quite good. Kabouters, Nukun, you know, it, it, gets, it gets difficult sometimes here. Yeah, 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 like there's been, there's been some kind of middling ones so far, but if this is a solid pair, I feel like you really want the Kabouters to go through, and I think you've done a good, solid job. The, the Nukun is also good. I think the uh, Nukun is a bit more of a... I think it has more mystery around it. Yeah. Because I, I kind of prefer that. I mean, I like Kabouters. Mm-hmm. They just seem a bit... Like, every society has, like, a helper little guy living around. Yeah, that's like, fair. Like, that's it's, fair. It's, it's not uncommon. There's another one or two in this list as well. Yes, there is. There is. Uh, okay, well, in that case, if, if you're... I'm okay with the knocking going. If, if you're willing to... to and I like the, know, horse, the horse the story, the little siren-esque, you mm-hmm. know, behavior... Yeah, no, it's, it's an interesting one. It's an interesting one, to be fair, and I think it, it kind of fits the bill quite well. And this idea of like mythical creatures or cryptids being used to explain kind of human behavior that we feel uncomfortable with. Yeah, like our our human behavior, our like debt, our things that kind of trouble yeah. us. I think that that's always very interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, definitely. And I feel like the bouters are just how Dutch people want to live. <laughs> Which <laughs> again, I'll kind of let that yeah. be. The bouters have excellent healthcare. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we have the O Monciello. Oh, the Monciello, yes. This is uh, my colleague Brunello. Uh, talking <laughs> Any about relation? So, uh, no, actually. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, so Brunello, if you're listening or watching, uh, shout out to you for telling us about this because uh, pretty interesting. And it's up against the Drosselites, which are a bunch of shadows. Oh, nice shadow people. I do yeah. like shadow people. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if these count as cryptids, but they were a cool story, and they wanted yeah. some shadow kind of stuff. Because I, I don't like yeah. ghosts. This is the closest I'm getting to them. <laughs> Ghost adjacent. Do you, are you aware of the, the O Monciello? Do you want to tell the people a bit about what it is? Yeah, so the Monkey Shello, uh, I think I pronounced that correctly. If not, better than I did. We're here so. now. We're here now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Brunello was telling me that like in Naples... They're also like kind of like little sprite creatures. Kind of sounds like almost like a gremlin type. Yep. That like if something goes missing in your house, uh, that they um, are to blame generally. But they can also like do like good stuff. Like they also like leave things for you and like help you. Out. I think I'm not sure about making shoes uh, exactly, but like yeah, just kind of these little household sprites that can be good or mischievous depending. Yeah. Yeah. You from what I saw is that there's more. I thought it was more one of them or something. Not that many, and they kind of like go through like the underground canals and water tunnels in yeah, Naples. That exactly, kind of stuff. yeah. They, they go through like the sewers of Naples, yeah. Yeah, uh, so they're nice little helper mm-hmm. creatures. And I like how it's just really yeah. city specific. Like yeah, only yeah, in yeah. Naples. I, I think and, that's cool. And Monkishello means uh, like little monk. It does, it does. So like the way they're dressed is like they're, they're said to dress in like, like big robes. Um, so yeah, I, I think, yeah, it's, it's quite fun. And like, yeah, the specificity. Naples is quite a specific city, yeah, and it, this just kind of matches that like reputation. There is a historical, you know, story about mm-hmm. how this myth may have been inspired. If it's a myth, yes, that, that are you that, aware of that, that? That I heard as well. I don't know. Do we save? Do we save this for the next round? You know, do well, we, at least you know, the lights are cool. Yeah, well, I, the, the story that I heard is that like the people who were like the water carriers, yeah. around the sewers, like dressed in a similar way to monks, like the robes that they wore, and that they would crisscross the sewers of the yeah. city and that's kind of where it came from i heard a different story a okay. bit more poetic one so there were two lovers a daughter of like a rich you know a uh, merchant who fell in love with some random guy and mm-hmm. the, the father didn't approve so no but you know as you know italians do they like to be romantic yes. so 
the guy snuck into her room during the night, you know, going across, you know, the treacherous, you know, Naples roofs, climbing yeah. in, you know, spending time with her. Mm-hmm. One day, the guy, no, no, no reason behind this, he slipped and fell to his death. Damn. Which I thought was kind of funny that it was, not funny, but funny in the, in the fact that it just happened, like, accidentally. Like, yeah, of course, you're climbing across roofs in Naples of all places. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways... That night, the, the, his girlfriend, or his, his, the woman, she fell pregnant. And then she gave birth to this little deformed child. And then out of pity or something, she went... <laughs> no, no, but, but it had like a weird head or something. So... They put a hood on it. Yeah, so she went to go live in like a monastery. Because, you know, she was heartbroken and everything. Yeah, and then yeah, she yeah. dressed the little thing up in like these little waterman clothes. And like in a monk's hood. And it ran around and d- did stuff. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean I, yeah, that, that, that's a much funnier story. Uh, I mean, you, I should have laughed at the foreign child. <laughs> so well, it, it had a weird head. That's what I read. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we, the time translation was off. But yeah, yeah, just uh, test out that or whatever. Uh, okay, that 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 is a good story. Not to be fair. Yeah, and just dressed him like a little monk. Yeah, but so yeah. you wouldn't get bullied or like killed or something. Yeah, I know. I think the bullying ship sailed a long time ago on that one. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, th- th- those are two equally good stories of the arts just the So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, tell me more to Drosselites. They kind of sound like a religious sect from like second century Palestine or something. Uh, unfortunately, it's much newer. It's from Greece. Oh. Okay. So in the year 1828, there was this big battle in this near the castle of a uh, uh, Franco Franco Castello. I believe I say that correctly. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's near Crete in Greece. Okay, yeah. Um, anyways, it's this big battle, and the Greeks lost 350 people. They died. And then, a few years later, they start to notice that every eve of that battle, there would be these really vivid shadows, mm. which form the shadows of, you know, Greek soldiers with yeah. the weapons, marching around the castle and doing, like, random stuff. Like, Damn. they would project it. That's and cool. this was noted by, like, a bunch of people mm-hmm. without any scientific explanation. And... Of different accounts. And there was even, I thought it was kind of funny, during World War II, the German patrols actually fired on them, like, thinking they were, like, some kind of enemy. Okay, yeah. So, like, like, it carried on for, like, over 100 years then. Yeah. Some people speculate it's, it's like, a mirage from, like, North Africa or something from the way the the things align. Yeah, yeah. But it's very specific, and it seems to have a lot yeah. of things. So I like to think they're, like, semi-autonomous ghosts that come out once in a while. Yeah, and the fact that, like, German soldiers saw them. Like, it wasn't even just, like, local people, like, seeing them. Yeah. That, like, that these... No, I don't know if the German soldiers, this was reported by themselves or by locals. I think it was by the locals. <laughs> okay, anyway, <laughs> I wasn't going to give it that much uh, credit. Yeah, you know what? Let's never give Nazis too much credit. Uh... Yeah, I, I like that, like, as as a shadow. And it's kind of poignant as well. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's, it's poetic. Yeah, and they're kind of, like, eternally trapped in, in this duty that led to their deaths. Yeah. Yeah. I prefer the monkey shadow, though. I'll put it through. I yeah, think yeah, it, yeah. I think the Drosselites is a bit of a stretch of what a cryptid or mythical creature is. They're more some, like, unexplained phenomena or, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or shadows. But still, for the geographic diversity, uh, you know, just for a bit of crack. For a bit of crack, why not? Now we're talking. Now we have uh, on Derachu. Yes, versus the Wolpertinger. Yeah. Uh, should we describe how they look, and then you can jump into your. Uh, yeah. So on Derachu, sort of photo here. Uh, that's on the Wikipedia page. Yeah, um, I wasn't sure where to get a good photo. Yeah, it's not really well attested. <laughs> uh, it just looks like a big ass otter with like nasty teeth. <laughs> and then the Wolpertinger is an absolute riot of an animal. It's, you know, like a jackalope yeah. situation. So it's uh, fundamentally a rabbit with, like, antlers and wings. That's kind of it. Yeah. And one else kind of, like, got, like, little fangs coming out. Yeah. yeah. So it, the accounts differ because Wolpertingers can also occasionally be said to have the legs of a pheasant, which okay. I thought was funny because pheasants are birds. Yeah. <laughs> so you literally just took one aspect of every element of, of an animal mm-hmm. in the forest and threw them together. It's just the European platypus. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how the Wolpertinger comes to be? Uh, some horrendous experiment? No. It's the result of a romantic relationship between a hare and a roebuck. Oh, okay. There we which, go. Which uh, does not seem very plausible. Sexy interspecies <laughs> love. <laughs> yeah. And it brings up this thing with <laughs> horns. <laughs> They should have put a little monk's robe on it. That would have covered up a multitude of sins. Yeah. Yeah. You forgot one thing it does as well. It can spray like a skunk. 
Excellent. But its spray is a bit like magical as it sticks on you for exactly seven years. Yeah, seven years is a magical number, isn't it? Yeah, like, I did like that. It's like with the uh, if you if you don't um, cheer someone in, in the eyes yeah. in, in, in Germany as well, you get seven years of uh, bad sex. So true. Yeah, don't know if they're yeah. linked, but yeah, seven I guess is a magical number. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, one other cool fact, which is less cool in the context of it being a cryptid, is that there are actually rabbits or hares in like that can have this virus, which causes these strange growths in their head. Like skin oh, growth, okay. and so people theorize that's where these kind of things come from. Yeah, so it's yeah, a bit more based in reality than it, it seems like because there's a lot of taxidermy things just thrown together of them. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. But no, I, I can see that. Like, yeah, people don't know what they're looking at, and then like, are someone like is visiting from like the city, and they, they don't really know wildlife very well, and then they yeah. see then they see this creature, and they just kind of create this whole fantasy in their yeah. head. So, yeah, I, I, I like it when it's kind of rooted in some reality. Yeah, yeah. Speaking about reality, reality, the most gruesome of realities, mainland Ireland. Yeah. Um, this Ireland's a beautiful country, but okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're flipping the script here because I'm going to do a little bit of talking uh, about what I know because uh, it's Irish stuff. And the Derechu, yeah, is uh, like an Irish otter cryptid. So Derechu means like water hound and you can still use it now to talk about like an otter. Uh, yeah. There's also Madra Ishka, which means like water dog. Yeah. Uh, so the Derechu, yeah, it's like a giant man-eating otter. So it'll be up to three meters long. They say it's like kind of half dog, half fish. Yeah. It could also just be a giant otter. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, there's uh, this uh, gravestone in Leitrim, which is in like northwest of Ireland. Yeah. Which has um, a drawing or like a like a carving of a Derechu on it. Because it allegedly killed a local woman mm-hmm. in the 1720s. That she was going to wash clothes at the lake uh, with Glenad Lock in Leitrim. And her husband heard a terrible roar. And he went down to the lake and he saw that his wife had been attacked and killed by this Derechu. So he then killed the creature. But Derechus, they mate for life. <laughs> I thought this was cute. They mate for life. <laughs> and so then the Derechu let out this horrendous shriek. And it's made emerge from the lake and then chased this guy who was called Terence, apparently. <laughs> uh, important detail. And uh, then, yeah, the story differs, but basically, the second Derechu was also murdered uh, by the man with some help, possibly. And uh, yeah, they have some, you know, attributes kind of mixed in like other cryptids, like, you know, their, their skin is magical. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to be killed with a silver bullet as well. Yeah. You know, like some kind of werewolf thing. Uh, also, if you kill one, you will die within 24 hours. Really? Yeah, that was also something that I read. Uh, now, a lot of it is an oral tradition, so like, there's a lot of differing accounts of this. But uh, yeah, uh, there has been some sightings of the Derechu in like, the 20th century around like, the west of Ireland. Uh, in one sighting, it had like 100 otters following it. So it was like, a <laughs> king otter kind of situation, <laughs> kind of like the king of the Kabouters. Uh but yeah, it's a fun little uh, cryptid that, that we have in Ireland, which is one of the lesser known ones compared to other ones that we can discuss. It's shortly. gruesome, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's, it's pretty nasty. It's like the bet de Gévaudan, really. Yeah. Uh, but, m- you know. But, but yeah, they come in pairs. Yeah. Generally. So I don't have any thoughts. Do you think you'll ever see one? Do you ever hope to? Do I hope to? No, because they sound they like eating people. Uh it would be cool. I, I love otters. Like, Same. That's it's really creatures. warms up to me because otters are quite cute. Otters are fantastic. Yeah, I, I was in Vancouver Aquarium. Yeah. Uh, last, last year, not two years ago now. But anyway, I saw them in Vancouver Aquarium. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, the man eating kind, less amazing. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Personally, uh, yeah, it's a I, tough I, one. Yeah, I, like the Valper Tinger is is amusingly silly. But then the <laughs> Derechu is also uh, a giant man eating otter, which is kind of fun. Yeah. I do like the Dower. There's not that many, like, big European cryptids in that mm, sense. Because yeah. I feel like a lot of the ones in Europe are... There, there's this thing about them being, you know, dainty, cute forest creatures, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But they all have some dark twist to them at the end of the day. That's it, like, like a grim fairy tale. But the Dober, who's like one of those things that would beat up any North American cryptid. Yeah, it, yeah. it, it, it goes, it goes, it squares up toe to toe. What do they call in wrestling? Mm-hmm. The 
they lock eyes, they yeah, yeah, they enter the ring. I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know actually why you're referring to. And I, I, I'm, I'm trying, trying, to, watch wrestling I'm trying to appeal to the like, 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 like a face off kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'll yeah. move it through. And it's cute. They mate for life. I think that's really sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they like swans. Yeah, I have another yeah. cool fact about them. I'll share later on next round. I can't wait. Yeah, here we have a uh, two interesting ones. Okay, the Lucarcol. Okay, versus the Elvitrich. Oh god, my German is not good. The Elvitrich. 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 Yeah. So, the Lucarlu. If you can't see the picture, it's supposed to be a. Um, it's a huge snail. Yeah, like huge. It's, it's like a. It's it's like the size of a little mountain or something. Oh, okay. Wow. That, yeah. that is big. It has these spikes. Yeah. It has these tentacles. It's, it's like this massive, imposing creature. Um, I think it, it, it has this slime it leaves behind whenever you go to see it. Well, yeah, it's a snail. And it's, uh, it comes from this small town in France called uh, Hasting, Hastingoids or something like that. And it has this hill called the Carlo, which mm-hmm. is this like round little bump. And the theory is that hill is hollow and it goes in there and kind of like, you know, lives there in the cave. Oh, okay. And then it comes out, you know, occasionally eats a person. Yeah. Hasn't been seen for a while, I imagine. No, I, I read somewhere that it's it's uh, hasn't been seen for 50 years, and people are like, maybe it died. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> because the, yeah, it's, like, it's, like, it's like, it's only one of them, you know? Yeah, some of these scripts are just kind of like one and done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and Lou, uh, God, yeah, like, if he's the size of a small mountain, you're going to see him regularly enough yeah. in the place. Yeah, I don't know how big the small mountain is. I, you, Europeans, like a hill this big can be a mountain for you, or it could be like the Alps, you know? We are in Belgium. We yeah. are in Belgium, yeah, yeah. Small mountain, yeah. it's entirely plausible that he's just like, you know, 10 meters high. I do like yeah. how um, it's French, and it's like, ooh, the French, their escargot will eat you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those like silly things, like what other country the would parallel happen? universe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the snails strike back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I like the idea all the snails in France got together and picked... Lou would be our defender. Yeah. yeah, although he seems to just not do much. Lazy guy, I think. Sleeps in the hill. Yeah, in cave. can't move very fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The how how did you say the German one again? Elvitrich. Elvitrich. Have you heard of this one? I haven't. No. Looking from the, it actually looks like two Pokemon. It does. The pictures aren't the best. I, I found a better one. Well, after I yeah, already yeah. made the graphics, but. No, 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 but I like it because it just looks like like someone just did this like <laughs> graphic design thing. Like Luke Car- Carcall looks like, actually looks like a Pokemon as well. It does. But the Elvitrich with, with the color and stuff, it looks like, yeah, it could just be um, from the next Pokemon game. I will say it's the size of a chicken, so don't kind of, kind of compare it to the, the Luke Carcoo. Okay. Anyways, it's, uh, it's basically a chicken-like creature, but it has antlers. You see, that's... If you want to make a cryptid, guys, just jazz up a regular animal with antlers. That's the secret. Yeah. Um, but there's also some other cool things. Uh, but in the 20th century, you know you know how Germans are. How do you make a concept better than it is? How do you make it? Uh... So let's say you have this creature with antlers. Okay, yeah. What would you add to it to improve its oh. appeal? Rollerblades. Close. Okay. They added breasts. <laughs> so by the, by the, <laughs> so a lot of the more bar depictions, you see this, this chicken with these nice big breasts. Oh, wait, yeah, it does have tits in that. I didn't, yeah. even, I didn't even notice. Okay. They have these statues of it a bit more prominent. So, yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. That is so creepy. That is so unnecessary. Anyways, the, the legend came. They also have origin. It came from crossbreeding chickens, geese, ducks with, uh, with forest creatures. So, like, uh, goblins or elves and stuff. Why are Germans so into these weird, like, Frankensteinian... I, I think they have these logical minds where they're like, A and B must equal C, so... <laughs> How do we make this work? <laughs> oh, uh, uh, the tits have got me. The elbow tits. <laughs> it's great. Okay. I will say yeah. this one is, uh, there is a lot of, you know, fun gags Germans like to pull on each other. Where they're like, yo, let's go hunt an Elvertrich to some unknowing guy. Oh, And they yeah, put yeah, the guy yeah. in a forest with a bag and they're like, we'll scare it towards you. Yeah. And then there's a ditch to guy. Yeah, I feel like I've I, I seen as a recurring theme for some of these creatures. Uh, mm. I think also, it's not on this list, but there was one in like, Catalonia, like the Gambosins, which is also like another thing that people go, let's go hunt it, and then like, yeah. she used to wind up somebody. Yeah. Uh, God, I don't know if the tits make it f- more like it or less like to go through. How much now. of a swine are you? Pig, am I? <laughs> now, the Luke Carcall, I do like the idea of a giant snail, though. That's 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 pretty good. Personally, I think I'm going to lean a bit to the Albertrich because the Wolpertinger didn't make it. 
I think one horned mm. small animal should make it for it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is a giant snail. It is a giant snail. You know what, though? I, I, I'm willing to let you have the Elvetrich. Ah, here this we is go. It's also pretty funny. But you see, I'm, I'm keeping the one in the back pocket for <laughs> the next half. Fair enough. And we'll yeah. switch over to the next half. Yeah. I know we've been going for a while, so I'm hoping you, the listener, are enjoying still as well. Yeah. Or, the viewer. or, like many listeners, just, you know, get to 20 minutes and then just give up. It's fine. <laughs> I feel like with our stuff, if you make it to 20 minutes, you're listening to most of it. <laughs> I hope at least. You listen to most of the good stuff anyway. Yeah, hey. <laughs> oh, I zoomed in uh, too far. Uh, one. One. I don't have my mouse for this one. I. You're just, you're just fucking freestyling. There we go. Uh, yeah, 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 close enough. There we go. Yeah, that's fine. So this one, first matchup on the second side of the bracket. We're halfway through. Yeah. We have the Fisher Pig. Against the Strugoi, which is uh, the predecessor to the modern vampire. Ah, okay, right, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Fisher Pig looks like some of us play a scene era. Yeah, so yeah. the Fisher Pig is actually probably the most credible cryptid on here. Okay. Because it was, you know, said to have existed in Hungary until the 1880s and 1890s. Wow, okay. And it's not much scary about it, it was just a big pig or boar. But the weird thing about it is it lived near the water and it ate only fish and crabs. That is an interesting fact with the pig, yeah. Yeah. Also, you're hungry. That's a very specific area for it to be in. Yeah, I guess yeah, so. Yeah. But but still, yeah, like it seems it seems plausible. Uh, it doesn't have antlers, for example. <laughs> no breasts either. Uh, like it might have uh, udders. Well, yeah, teeth, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's a mammal. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, a bit less wacky. It is a bit less, there's a few that aren't as wacky, but it's nice to have, you know, a bit of flavor in the I guess the whole so, pot. yeah, yeah, for some scientific credibility. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, moving on, vampires, Strugoi. Um, I've heard of vampires. Yeah. Have you heard of yeah. the Strugoi? I have not heard of them, no. So it's basically, because vampires are basically created in the 1800s by some, you know, by some, uh, by some British novelists who you know, f saw these myths with Strugoi and saw how much panic they were causing in Slavic communities and, you know, made them, you know, worldwide as, like, a literary sensation. Uh, but the Strugoi is the, the Simon, real thing. Simon. It was not a British author. Author. It, it was an Irish author. Well, Bram Stoker was the one who popularized yeah, yeah, yeah. it, but there was one who wrote the first one was a okay, right, was okay, a, okay. I did my research well, on you, this. You I've got to say the person's name then because I was getting concerned because I thought you were calling Bram Stoker British author. Uh, it's okay. an offers in general. That's fine. Was That's he fine. really Irish? Yeah, he's from Dublin. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I know his name doesn't sound very Irish, but yeah. No, was, yeah. Anyways, yeah. The, the first major literary novel was yeah. written uh, called The Vampire with a Y instead of an I. Okay. A stylistic choice. Um, written 1819 by John Polidari. Oh, actually, yeah, I do know yeah. that. Yeah, because it, yeah. it was the same. Uh, he he was on the same trip that spawned Frankenstein. Was he? Yeah, he he, he when mm. they when they were in Switzerland, and I think it might have been on the same trip that he wrote *The Vampire* and Mary Shelley wrote *Frankenstein*. They had like, mm. a competition. Oh. Was, Lord Byron was hosting it. Right, and right. This does sound familiar. And if I recall correctly, Paul Adairi wrote *The Vampire* on that trip, and Mary Shelley wrote *Frankenstein*. Uh, I will say, yeah. Mary Shelley will come up again later on in this podcast, oh. but not in the context of Frankenstein. Ooh. So, cliffhanger over there. Stay around for hour two, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. Uh, okay. the, the Strigoi, you know, they're basically vamp. They have all the characteristics of the vampires you associate mm -hmm. nowadays. They're like... Uh, Sparkling they, sunlight? Uh, maybe not that one. Oh, they, okay, they, sorry, they yeah. prefer to come out in the dark, you know. Mm -hmm. they, 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 it's, yeah, they can shapeshift into an animal, typically more of like a like a bat kind of creature, yeah, that kind of stuff. The first one recorded, they actually have his name down, which I thought was oh, excellent. I thought it, I thought when I read this, I'm like poor guy, you got gonna be forever known as the first Strugoi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was some guy named Jur Grando Al Al Ali Al Al uh, in 1656, um, modern in Croatia. Mm -hmm. but anyways, he died. You know, f like, he got sick, got ill, do. died away. They buried him. And then for the next 16 years, he kept terrorizing his town. Wow. Which I thought was quite a long time. <laughs> they couldn't figure it out, could they? Yeah, they were like, what do we do with this? Yeah. So <laughs> 16, years. 16 years later, uh, they finally had enough. They gathered the local priest. Mm -hmm. They gathered a community people. They yeah. went to his grave. They yeah. dug up his body. Yeah. Perfectly preserved, they said. Of course. They performed uh, an exorcism. 
and they cut off his head, and then it died. It took him 16 years to figure it yeah. out. I was, I was, I I mean, on that minute one. I will say, this was the first one. Yeah, I, I guess. Like, yeah, probably seen less And they're like, oh, time. well, we tried stabbing it. We tried, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. shooting it. It kept coming. And the sanctity of the body as well, like, you know, to, like, after it's gone, you don't want to, like, remove its head and stuff, so. Yeah. yeah. Or even dig up a grave. That's a disgusting I didn't activity. realize that there was a first vampire that would have named. That's, that's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I, I was also quite, well, Strugoi. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, to go yeah. Yeah, yeah, first vampire was uh, written by some English man. Exactly, I'll jump on it there. Okay, I think yeah, to go is better than the Fisher Pig. I also vampire. have a have a checklist of what it means to be a van- of what you know some uh you know if any of these apply to you, you could be a vampire. Oh, so okay. let me know if any of these apply to you. Buzzfeed quiz. Yeah, yeah. here we go. You're the seventh child born to the same woman of the same sex. Uh, okay, not applicable to you, I assume. No. Well, you, you, you could be. So. <laughs> well, that was the first. Come on, but uh, uh, you're uh, you lived a life of sin. Uh, yeah, that could it's be the general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a sinful person. Yeah, no thanks. Yeah, you died without being married. Uh, currently doing well on that front. Yeah, yeah, yeah halfway there. I'm gonna say myself yeah, to be honest. Yeah. You died by execution for perjury. Seems unlikely, but okay. Yeah, you never know how much this podcast will blow up. So mm-hmm. uh, true, true. You could die by suicide, or okay. you could also die by a witch's curse. Uh, oh, okay. And what I was getting from this list is it's, uh, I think anybody really qualifies at some point. Yeah, yeah. Life is seen <laughs> really super... cast a wide net, I have to say. You know. but there's also some some cool things that they were like, ooh, this is the things that you know, you can identify as Trigoi by, you know. They don't like, uh, mm-hmm. uh, they don't like garlic. Do you like garlic, onions? I love, I love garlic, yeah. Okay, never mind. Yeah, um, crosses. Yeah, they, uh, you know, uh, the other thing, they're said to be bald on the top of their head. Oh, shit. Ooh. Oh, watch your it's, boy uh, No. Okay. I'm unmarried and balding, guys. <laughs> don't, don't repeat my mistakes. And uh, on November the 30th, do you tend to sleep outside? <laughs> I don't like camping, so no. Mm, okay. No. okay. I think you're in the clear in this case. I and that's so, the yeah. Feast of St. Andrew, and a vampire would t- oh, like true, to sleep yeah, outside. Day, yeah. Uh, day. National Day of Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Strigoi. There we go. Let's move them on. Is they true. roam yeah. some more for another we'll, we'll 15 for years. Our, Big boy Bram. Yeah. Here we have a cool little combination. Have you heard of the Dutch flying jellyfish? Which no, is I've heard of the flying Dutchman, but not this guy. Anyway, it looks like a jellyfish that's flying. Um, and then it's up against the, the Grugach or the Brownie, which is a little house elf. Yeah, from Scotland, right? The yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know more about these? I wasn't aware until I searched them up and I f- discovered they were basically like the ones out of Harry Potter. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, that would make sense, because that's Jacob Rowling to a lot of inspiration from Scottish stuff. Doesn't she live in Scotland? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the rain um, continues her terror from there. I know, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, like the, you know, the houses of Hogwarts, and you can go to the cemetery in, um, uh, in Glasgow, and you can see, like, all the names, or Edinburgh, mm. but anyway, yeah, you can see all the names of, like, different characters from Harry Potter. But anyway, yeah, the Dutch playing jellyfish. It, it's not that much behind it, but there's been this common phenomenon around, mm-hmm. you know, the last 70 years or so of people seeing flying jellyfish in the sky. Not in the Netherlands specifically, but in places like Denmark, Russia, okay. Belarus, China, Norway, Canada. There's all been cases of these flying jellyfish, sometimes of pictures, sometimes of, you know, yeah. drawings of what they look like. Uh, but they're just like a jellyfish looking like thing in the sky, an atmospheric jellyfish. And in 2015, this picture was captured near Groningen in the Netherlands. Wow, okay. By this guy, Harry Peston. Does Harry, yeah, I got a good photo to be fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. he was actually a photographer, uh, okay. but it was just like a storm just ended, so you can see like a darker sky, mm, and he just happened yeah. to capture that. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't know what that was. Yeah, it just sort of looked like a jellyfish with like a tail. Yeah. Almost like a comet as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. It's, it's a neat little story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, especially with such a geographical spread as well. Yeah. That's, that's hard to identify. People think it might just be a meteorological phenomena or something like that. Seems plausible, yeah. I, it, it's, it's neat. It looks a lot like a jellyfish, I gotta yeah, say. It does, to be fair. So. It does, yeah. And what about the, uh, the brownie? Yeah, it's basically what we said. It's this little household elf servant thing. Um, it does chores. It comes out at night. If you don't treat it well, it gets mad at you and does little tricks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty standard. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's the thing where if you give it an article of clothing, it leaves. Ah, okay. And so that's, that's what really reminded me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, cool. Apparently they view that as like something offensive to them. <laughs> Which I'm like, cool. <laughs> the other reason you can get it to leave is uh, if you give it a name. Oh. They don't like being called names and stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But yeah. So if if you're just like, hey, Michael, they're like, oh, yeah, you ruined yeah. it now. They were, I, it. I read. I, think I said no names. Yeah, I said no names. <laughs> I, I read on this page where this one guy had one living in his house, and he called them puddle boots or something like that because he splashed a lot. And this little brownie was like, yo, man, this crosses the line. I'm gone. <laughs> that was that would be great as cautious, so. Puddle boots. Yeah. <laughs> My little house self. <laughs> My little house self. Puddle boots. Yeah. I think the jellyfish should move on. I, I wasn't too inspired by the brownie grugach. I saw the name and thought it was something sexier. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're like, you know what I just need is a pair of tits. That's what that means. <laughs> the Germans had the right idea of the other titch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's another that's flying jellyfish. Sure, yeah, it's kind of mysterious, so... Here we are on the, the next two. Ooh, uh, okay. Ooh, I'm zooming out again. Again, apologies. I'm on a different laptop than normal. Um, the Leshy versus the Bullabuck. Okay, complete mystery to me, these two. So, so please enlighten me. Yeah, Leshy. I love his name. It's very cute. It's a Slavic, you know, forest spirit. Ah, okay, nice. So it's kind of like, it, it's like the man of the forest. You know mm. how uh, that Dr. Seuss story, like the Lorax, I speak Lorax, for the trees? Yeah. This is very much uh, that, but in like a Slavic countries. Orangutan also means man of the forest. Does it? Yeah. Well, yeah, pretty yeah. sexist. What do you do? Yeah. Anyways, um, it has a few cool facial features. It has no eyebrows or eyelashes, and it's missing Ooh. its right ear, specifically the right one. Oh, that's not good, though, if you're sweating and stuff. Like, the eyebrows, that's what, you know, you're, you're going to get sweat in your eyes all the time. Yeah. 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 Anyways, it's its big thing is it, it like, uh, it just protects the forest. It's sometimes yeah. a bit mischievous. Some people are, like, if you want to confuse it, if it's, like, on your trail, because sometimes it makes you lost, that kind of stuff. Mm. You, can, you can do things like, you know, wear your shoes on the wrong feet, and it gets, like, oh, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Which which ear did Van Gogh lose? Was that the right or left ear? I'm trying to think of the self-portrait. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it, I don't, I'm not going to take a gamble. Oh, so, yeah. Guess. Who knows? Maybe, maybe he's inspired by the Leshy. Maybe. Yeah. I thought it was a neat little, it's like the gentle forest giant, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit goofy as well. Yeah, yeah. and it's, in the, the, the a cool thing is it kind of shapeshifts in a sense, where mm. in the forest, it's like as tall as the trees. Yeah. But as soon as it leaves the forest, it shrinks like 10 centimeters tall. Oh, so it's, it gains all its power. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, that, that is pretty cool, yeah. I think it's neat. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's quaint. Yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe it's a bit mischievous here and there. There's some like side legends of it being a cannibal, but I'm gonna ignore those for the time being. Yeah, so that's that's all slander. That is, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, revisionist history. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, speaking about a cannibal, we're moving on to the bullabuck. Oh, it is eating a person in this in this drawing. <laughs> so you know what? Excellent segue. Yeah, this is another. It, it's a bit of a a wide range of activities. Whereas it's like a common kind of trope for like a monster in both the Netherlands and Flanders, mm -hmm. where it's like the Bullabuck monster. Um, it, anyways, it goes around and eats people, specifically children. Um, and it very famously in Amsterdam, it used to live under this bridge called the Bullabuck or something ah, is what it used okay. to say. And then it would like try and get them to come to the water and it would like, and it'd like mm. eat them up, gobble them up. So I wouldn't ask any riddles. No, it, it no. just uh, makes like just a eating. thundering sounds and stuff. Okay, but yeah, it's, it's 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 you know the the garden variety of, of monster in yeah. the bridge. It sort of looks like a giant like possum or something, but kind of scaly. I think it's just bad medieval illustrations. Yeah, medieval illustrations are always a good time. Yeah, yeah, I, I will say I I do wonder if it was just a style or if they just weren't that great at drawing. When you see how they draw people as well, I think I think it was a stylistic thing. Yeah, I I would have said like, is drawing something that you can become good at? Yeah. Or is there somewhere where you, like, limit out? I, I, I don't think you can go good at drawing. I feel like there is, there is you know, people back then who are as good at drawing as people are now. Like, you know, we do right. get better as a society at drawing, I don't think. So I think, I think yeah, it's more of a stylistic choice. Right. Because I, I just, I, I guess, anyways, I think we're going off on a tangent here. Yeah, they're all but, Tannis hacks in the 14th century. Come at me. Anyways, this picture of Leshy is also from the 1913s, hand-drawn. I, I, I yeah. I, despite my Dutch roots, I lean a bit towards Leshy. This thing ate too many of my kindred, so. <laughs> yeah, Leshy. Let's, let's, go let's Leshy. let the gentle yeah. forest giant go for uh, Here we go now. Big boy coming up. Two big boys. Two big boys. The Loch Ness Monster. The Loch Ness Monster. Versus the Skelges Merkel. Skelges Crimsley. Skelges Crimsley. Perfect. Which is an Icelandic beast with scales. Ooh. Okay, Loch Ness Monster, we all know the story. Yeah, it's pretty famous. It's pretty famous. I was going to wear my, I wore my Bigfoot shirt instead. I like it. I think it, it 
It pops a bit. I had yeah. the. Did you see my Loch Ness uh, jersey? Oh yeah, yeah, that's good as well. It's yeah, yeah. the Loch Ness. It's from like the Loch Ness FC. They have yeah. a, they they released some kit with like a Loch Ness monster. It's right? pretty funky. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it looked a bit more professional for the pod, but uh, important. Yeah, it's it's a cool little thing. Um, I guess everybody knows the story. I don't think we need to recount it too much. It's been uh-huh. spotted since you know five hundreds, the year mm-hmm. five hundred. Yeah. Um, guess how many sightings there have been up to mid twenty twenty two. Jeez, that is that is a very hard question. Okay. I'm going to say 4,200. That's a lot. Officially, 1,141. Okay. I, I thought it would be a couple of years. Yeah. 500. So. Yeah, but they, they, get, they get a lot. And apparently the guy who maintains the official Loch Ness Monster Sighting Register says it's that he one. weeds through the selections carefully to make sure they're not too many <laughs> weird ones in there. <laughs> so it's a verifiable list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. only the best, only the best. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it brings, apparently... 80 million euros to the Scottish economy each year. Yeah, you know, I'm not surprised. So, I'm not surprised. Especially that part of the country, too. Like, it's yeah. not very much tourism. It's very remote, like Loch Ness. Yeah, I would like to yeah. visit the place. I think normally I'm not one to go, you know, hiking around in, like, the bug-ridden wilderness. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it has its charms, but I'd rather just go to my parents' farm. But yeah, it seems like a quaint thing. There's enough history there for me to really, you know, visit the Loch Ness Monster Museum, visit yeah. the other Loch Ness Monster Museum, oh, go on the Loch Ness Boat names. Tour. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that. I think it'd be really neat. Yeah, yeah. You record a podcast from Loch Ness? Uh, one of the... I'll have to fight for my spot. If yeah, like. yeah. Well, the parents <laughs> out there. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. But you know what? Let's, let's, give, uh, let's shine a light on a lesser known creature. The, uh, the Skellius Grimsley. Yes, it's from yeah. Iceland. Iceland has a ton of cryptids. Yeah. These people have nothing better to do than just make up one for each, for each you know, Aren't drunk just, at night. You know, yeah, you're just so cold. You start imagining things like, you know, elves and so on. Yeah. Anyways, this is a... It's huge. It's the size of a calf or a horse, they say. Okay. So it's a big thing. Big club-like tail at the end. Mm-hmm. But his body's covered with these big shells, which make this distinct rattling sound as it comes, mm-hmm. like, around. Yeah. But the thing is, this thing lives in the water, which is almost surprising. I, I don't really associate that. No. But then it sneaks onto the mainland during, like, the dark nights. And let me guess these people. Um, I think occasionally... It's not... It just attacks people sometimes, just you know? snack, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 didn't, I didn't see too many claims of, you know, yeah, eating the, people. The but. water-based thing makes no sense. It looks designed yeah. to be on land. Yeah. But then the hippopotamuses don't look like they're designed for water either. Yeah. You know? Anyways, these things are pretty tough. They're hard to kill. They can, like, resist, like, most bullets, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the other thing is about it, its blood is toxic. Which oh. is often also a common trope of these cryptids. That is true, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have seen that come up. Uh, yeah. But it's a, it's a pretty, f- it's a pretty fun one. Yeah, it's like a that. fun yeah. one. I think it could have gotten a little further if it wasn't water based. <laughs> yeah, the water based thing makes no sense. I'm sorry. Uh, at least the Lactus Monster is designed for the uh, for the aquatic yeah. environment. But people do think it's kind of badass, and I think I'm personally going to lean Loch Ness. Some people might be a little slighted that it got out, but that's the luck of the draw. Yeah, or the lock of the draw, we should say. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Moving from one sea monster to the next, we have Storjot Zurut, which is a Swedish sea serpent uh, hailing from uh, Lake Storsjön in Sweden against fairies. Irish fairies. The ace she, as they're called. Yeah. Uh yeah, I mean, I'm happy to talk through the A-She uh, with the fine folks at home and with you. Thank you. Uh, Just don't bring him here from what I've learned. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the thing is, like, you know, uh, fairies have gotten, gotten a rebrand in recent years. Uh, you know, things like Tinkerbell, for yeah. example. Uh, or the famous photo of the fairies in the garden. Uh, the Irish one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With. Uh, but the A-She, the origins, obviously, you know, there's many different versions, but I think the most interesting one is that they are the descendants of the Tua de Danon, who were like legendary inhabitants of Ireland. Uh, and they were the last race to live in Ireland before humans came along, before mm. um, uh, son or grandson of Noah, of Noah's Ark, came along from Spain. <laughs> and uh, the Tua de Danon were forced underground. And uh, if you have played the game Undertale, uh, that is. Sort of the story with like monsters being forced underground and humans and they have a battle and stuff. Right. So I think yeah, this is sort of like an inspiration. Uh, and yeah, fairies are still kind of a prominent part in a lot of parts, uh, prominent part of the culture in many areas in Ireland still. Uh, they're called many different names, but they're not really the nicest people. 
Uh-huh. Sharp teeth, right? Yeah, like uh, one of the names that I'm familiar with is Nadina Maha, which means right. like, the good people, which is like a sarcastic name or like kind of like you, you know, you kind of want to say how great they are in case they're around because they, if you if they hear you shit talking to them, you'll be in trouble. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, very connected with nature uh, because you know it's like a way to protect the environment. I think too, where people are like. You can't go down that tree. You can't, you know, move that bush. You can't move that rock because that the fairies are yeah. living there. Uh, and yeah, like even now you have the marks in the environment, like with fairy forts, kind of these raised like kind of rings yeah. in the earth that are still um, like considered kind of magical and special. And you you had like politicians, like a member of parliament, come in a few years ago and saying that like anytime they try to build a road around a fairy fort. <laughs> that like things have kind of gone mysteriously wrong and that like we need to be very careful like messing with, with these things in nature. And he was kind of like mocked by the, you know, the, say the national yeah. media and a lot of people. But like in parts of Ireland, this is still like a prominent belief that like you don't mess with fairy forts. Uh, and you do have some tales of fairy sightings from like more recently in history. And just the idea that like they're very powerful creatures. You don't, you don't cross them. Uh, and one other interesting thing is like I was talking about earlier, like using mystical creatures to explain real phenomena is like the fairies are known to take away children and replace them with a with a she og uh, or like a changeling, and that this is like a, a way to explain like developmental issues in children historically. It's kind of like what we theorized, <laughs> yeah. like say like if child like. Ha- had like what we would call in like autism for yeah. example and like they didn't you know weren't like responsive or like non-verbal or something that there was this idea that like oh this isn't my real child this is like a fairy child right and uh, that comes up like in, in, in folklore and stuff and as an explanation because people just didn't have this idea of, kind yeah. of neurological issues and our developmental issues they didn't have the language for it so yeah fairy children <laughs> instead uh, so yeah all very interesting uh, would you believe in a fairy like or do you like have you heard accounts close to home I haven't no I think I, I grew up in like in, in the city like I think I'm, I'm not as close to this you I had think, a house self right yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> so no I, I think it definitely but definitely in parts of the country like mm-hmm. out in West Cork if you go to Kerry like this, this politician was from Kerry right who spoke with the fairy forts uh, I think like yeah like certainly in, in parts of the country you probably still hear, hear these beliefs and uh yeah, look, I think it's it's a way to explain certain phenomena, and it's like a way as well to like, uh, as as a reminder to people to like look after the environment and not like mess with natural order of things. Right. If they add this warning of like, oh, this fairy's gonna come along and take your child if you chop down that tree. I just example. don't like their sharp teeth. <laughs> like, I, I've had this thing where I've become irrationally not scared, but like when I see, it, it, you don't have these in Europe, thank God, but you have these chipmunks in Canada, right? Okay, yeah. And they're like these gruesome, they're, they're cute, you know? Yeah, I've been shit once. Y- yeah, but they have these teeth. And sometimes when they're like, they have young or something, they run after you. And they're like these tiny creatures. And like, I know it's not going to kill me, but those bites don't look pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and I feel the same way about like a wow. fairy. They could take a, like a, a pinch of a chomp in you, you know? Le, le bête de Gévaudan sounds like no problem. Yeah. But a chipmunk, he's running for the hills. Yeah. <laughs> well, not running, I'm like... Kicking, not quick kicking, but I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> sidestepping quite quickly. Stomping, yeah. <laughs> nah. Tap dancing. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess yeah, sharp teeth too. But uh, well, speaking about things with sharp teeth. Oh, our the, little store should do it. Our our Swedish yeah. friend over here. Yeah, he has some sharp teeth. He's a. Uh-huh. Uh, this one also has quite a bit of history behind it. it it's uh-huh. Swedish. Um, apparently, some trolls were messing about with a cauldron. Having to do that. And then uh, there was a big bang, and this thing flew out and fell in the lake. <laughs> and that's how it came to be. <laughs> Which I thought was a funny way of doing they, it. They put in two eyes of Newton's out of one. Yeah. I don't know, but uh, something went wrong. <laughs> they got the recipe super wrong. So what the locals did is some uh, they got one of their, their rune masters. They don't have magicians, mm-hmm. they have rune masters. Excellent. Which sounds like some some like hardcore like magician card playing guy. You know those? Oh, yeah, yeah like Magic Gatherer. Yeah, or that, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm to say. Yeah. It's like a rune master. Anyway, he made this rune on this island, which has like this inscription in it, which keeps it like locked into the lake. Mm. Which I guess is a smart way of dealing with it. That is smart. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
Anyways, it's been seen a ton of times. It's been okay. seen uh, uh, around 200 times or something I saw. I okay, think that's pretty good. Yeah, 200 documented testimonies from 500 different people. So oh, that, that is impressive. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Um, other cool political fact, we mentioned politicians. Mm -hmm. had a political element. In 1986 or so, the town closest to it, to celebrate its 200th birthday, they declared it an endangered species. Nice, nice. But uh, you can't have that much fun in life, though. Because in 2005, their ombudsman said that this was basically misusing your power <laughs> and it's no longer an endangered species. <laughs> you know, ombudsman, ombudsman is a Swedish word. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. There, there you go. go. I'm point this back for you. We can't. I always wonder where that came from. Yeah, yeah. there you go. It's Swedish. Anyways, uh, fairies versus Strozjuren. I think we just sent you the Loch Ness Monster, so it's unfortunately coming at a bad time. This stuff should do True. Uh, and the fairies, look, I'm, I, I find it very interesting. Mm -hmm. As a concept, uh, I, I I prefer the fairies. I'll move it on. Thank as you. much as I'm terrified of them, <laughs> I should be. You don't laugh. It's not a boo. It's not a boo. We we are going to bring the winner into the room later. It's a, it's fine. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, here come my boys. On. Here come my boys. We have trolls. I meant to put trolls there, put dwar. I'm going to switch that. Do you want to talk about leprechauns who they're up against? Well, I'll talk about leprechauns. Yes. So probably the most famous of the Irish mythical creatures slash cryptids. Uh, leprechauns. Uh, an Irish luchorpon. So creature with a small body. Because they're just little guys. Uh, and yeah, they're kind of like gnome-like creatures. Like kabouter. Uh, yeah, they're similar to kabouters. Yeah, they live in uh, toadstools, for example. Oh, yeah. uh, they make shoes, not wooden ones. Uh, now, are they like professional or amateur cobblers? There's a bit of dispute over that. Uh, interestingly, the colour they're more associated with historically is red, not really? green. Yeah, I think the green kind of got fused in kind of Irish right. at some point. So but they, they could have basically been a kabouter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's very similar, yeah. So they no, generally wore red... Uh, and if you caught them, they could give you wealth. And that kind of evolves mm. into the pot of gold kind of idea. I don't know where the rainbow comes from. That's somewhere yeah. in there. That, that gets mixed in another point. Uh, so a couple of interesting things about leprechauns. Um, yeah, they're all kind of like trickster sorts. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, stories of them giving things to people that actually don't work the way they're intended to. Uh, like a story about like them giving, like, magical seaweed to someone so they can, like, breathe underwater, and it does not work. Sounds like Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to uh, stop making her. <laughs> it's just, she just, she ripped off so much stuff, we can't help it, you know? It's, it's yeah. not, it's not her fault, it's hers. Yeah. Uh, but, anyway, the most interesting fact about leprechauns is that you can visit the last colony of leprechauns really? in Ireland. Dublin? Yes. Uh, no, it's That's north sad. of Dublin. There's a leprechaun museum in Dublin. But north of Dublin, in um, Carlingford, which right. is um, quite close to the border with Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. so, you know, kind of northeast, uh, there's this guy called Kevin Woods, who runs these tours around Carlingford, like, uh, locked Cooley Mountains, and he claims that there is a colony, oh, he has 236 <laughs> leprechauns, he's very exact on the number on the website, and that there, that he has like seen these leprechauns on several occasions, and so he does like tours and like you know kids come and he talks with leprechauns. Uh, it's it's I I can't tell if he really believes or if he's just like playing this role perfectly. I think all he's seen is that Scotland makes eighty million a year off the Loch Ness monster. I think you're so right. I think that's what it is. He saw that Loch Ness money. He was like, I'm gonna get a piece of that. Like. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's the leprechaun colony in Carlingford. I, I haven't had the pleasure of going. I think uh, you need to visit that. Yeah, and, Give it some and on the website they also claim that the leprechauns are protected by the EU Habitats Directive. I guess it would be. Yeah, well, because that area <laughs> is protected by the EU because it's like there's a lake there. It's like known for like natural beauty, uh, but like the website kind of makes it sound like it was there lobbying on behalf of right. leprechauns. That made it protected. I don't right. think that, that the EU considered leprechauns when making the decision. I mean, <laughs> back to like the Bigfoot stuff, right? There's a lot of like cases where they're like, ooh, the Bigfoot, if it did exist, you can't prove it doesn't exist, so therefore it should be considered, considered an endangered species. And that logic, you know, is somewhat... You can stretch it to a certain limit to yeah. like also consider it like legally an endangered species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah, it's but, slightly. I guess two hundred or twenty six or whatever leprechauns left to make it endangered. So does he have like 
I just wonder, like, if you're a child, you're gonna go see a leprechaun mm-hmm. museum, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna see a leprechaun. What does this guy do? Does he have like a like a stuffed leprechaun sitting there? Well, I think or it's, like it's kind of like this idea of like that they're very like solitary creatures, so, and they don't want to interact with humans. But imagine telling yeah. a group of six year olds that who dare to see a leprechaun, and he's oh, like, no, right. no, no, patience, it'll come out a bit later. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, for me, in my opinion, he he is he is a bit of a charlatan. Uh, I kind of prefer that than the idea that he actually genuinely believes in it because that would be troubling to me. I thought that'd be that'd be cool too. It would be, in a way. Yeah. But, yeah, so leprechauns, uh, yeah, fairies, I think fairies are a bit more on the cryptid side because people still kind of believe in them. Right. Not, people still kind of have a bit more, like, see them as more plausible than, than leprechauns. And I think, right. And I think Irish people kind of hate leprechauns because that's kind of become, like, the stereotype. And, you know, like, the movies, the leprechaun movies and the Lucky Charms guy. We don't even get Lucky Charms in Ireland. <laughs> But like that, this is what Americans think of Ireland. The fighting Irish, the, the fighting the Irish, exactly. Irish, yeah, Notre Dame, Dickinson. that yeah, the leprechaun. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's I mean, we we got a mixed relationship with, with the leprechaun, but still yeah. interesting, interesting creature. Yeah, it's like when I was bullied for wearing wooden shoes, you know. But yeah. <laughs> See, you're joking, but I I have seen a picture from your house with wooden shoes in, in the image. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, moving on to trolls. <laughs> Speaking about big creatures. <laughs> Speaking about getting trolled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a better segue. Uh, these are mainly Norwegian thing. Started yeah. appearing in Viking stories as these weird creatures that were sometimes nice, sometimes mean. Mm-hmm. Basically solitary things, live in the wild. Yeah. Apparently, they have this thing where like their features match like the physical features of their environment, which I think is kind of cool. So oh, kind of like yeah, one yeah, yeah. in sync with the environment. Mm-hmm. They're sometimes tricky and cunning. They do random things. I guess the troll into the bridge because there's a few different varieties. Like there's the mountain ones. There's like the mm. the bridge ones. That yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Have you seen Troll Hunters? It's the Norwegian one. No. It's, it's a good movie. Yeah. It kind of like set modern fun. in Norway, but this idea of like this part of the government is their job to like make sure the trolls gonna stay where they are yeah. in kind of remote areas and they don't like you know say like. Knocking the power lines yeah. or things like that. So yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a fun movie. It's so, funny. Yeah. I know there's a lot of like statues and stuff of, like trolls in Norway, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I would love to do like because I, I think one of my my uncle went there to do like a trip through Norway. With my cool little map yeah. in the background. See what a home studio brings you. Yeah, <laughs> but no, he did like a trip through it, and I'm like, damn, I'd love to do that and visit all the troll sites. Mm, exactly. Yeah, but, that, that would be pretty fun. Yeah, uh, I just have to convince my my girlfriend that's a good use of our time. But I yeah. think I think she'll she'll be she'll come around yeah. to it. So well, I mean, yeah. she's letting me do this. So. Well, yeah, she's yeah, that's a lock in the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of not that. locked, just to be clear, she can go in any time she wants. <laughs> yeah. So these two trolls or leprechauns? Oh, I don't know. Actually, this is hard. I, They're both pretty good. I was disappointed at how little information I found about trolls. Mm. I think they're just such a subset of like creature. Yeah. That there's a lot of like made up tales and stuff already right around course, it. Yeah, yeah. It's just not a lot of niche knowledge i think mm. to me as an outsider sure i can bully you about being leprechaun like <laughs> but at least it's a bit more creative and i like kabouters and i didn't put them through so yeah you know what yeah that's not leprechaun's true then it's a good Go picture on. too it is a good picture of that Some hand-drawn it. image yeah uh, moving on i think almost one of the last ones the penultimate one yeah the L- lario soro soro not sorus interesting it's yeah. italian <laughs> anyways versus the doppelganger Okay. A doppelhunger. I don't know how to... I think that's what Germans would say. I think it's just doppelganger, yeah. Yeah. A doppelganger was another, like, niche one I thought I would put on. Yeah, interesting. But it yeah. is a... Uh, some people believe in them, you know? Yeah, like, this is kind of like, the, you know, a recurring idea in, like, yeah. mythology and, and literature as well of the doppelganger. Uh, if, yeah. yeah, you want to enlighten me, because I'm not really aware of the, um, maybe the more, like... Uh, mythological element of it there's not much behind in that sense it's just the idea that you have a biologically unrelated lookalike somewhere else and then the idea is if you see them bad luck will happen to you it's a bad omen it's a real because i think it's almost like a you look it's like a like a fright almost right yeah yeah, because imagine you ran up to somebody you look exactly the same like you same mannerisms like it mirrors your life a bit it's like walking over your own grave yeah 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 yeah, yeah, exactly Mm. Uh, have you ever met someone like that? Like I've met like two Simons my entire life. I don't yeah, think I did. Yeah, it's like Simon. Someone looks like you. I don't call Simon. See, I was gonna say that I was. I was thinking about this while I was writing up my notes, and yeah. I was like, I barely think of how I look myself in in a way. Mm, okay. 
like I, my 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 for better or worse, my my sense of self identity is very detached from reality. Detached from reality. Or at least it's detached from your looks, which is probably a good thing. I, I'm vain enough, but <laughs> see, I did my hair before. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> he's tall. He's not going to worry about you. See, that's that, that's what it is. The thing yeah. is, I have doppelgangers. Yeah, they call my brothers. They look very similar to me. Oh, true, actually, yeah. So I kind of disassociate myself maybe a little. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah, yeah. But you, you never got like a photo from somebody being like, hey, I, I just saw this person. They look a lot like you. No, I never had that happen to me. Okay. Although I, I'm sure it will once they see my brother walking around. Because of a brother yeah. who's four years younger than yeah. I am. Show me a picture of him afterwards. Or eight so years, yeah. Him, yeah, because uh, yeah. Yeah, I got a photo once from my friend. Really? Uh, and I have to say, yeah, the guy did look a lot like me. Really? Hey, it's happened like a couple of times and a couple of times like nah but th- this one time I remember uh, the guy that she sent me a photo of I was like shit I was like yeah she does like the facial hair was similar and just uh, the teeth as well yeah I was the teeth <laughs> yeah 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 just like the certain way like the way the mouth was going to open I was like yeah I, I, yeah I could see that <laughs> I'll try and dig up the photo uh, and show you later but yeah it is, it, it and, is and, and I'll idea. post it on the screen and if you happen to be watching I want to <laughs> Connect you. Simon's brother, <laughs> this random guy in Italy, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did anything bad happen to you the next day? Uh, not the next day, or, I don't recall, no. Mm. Uh, bad things have happened to me since, obviously, but <laughs> I don't think they're connected, yeah. Anyway, in, in yeah. literature, or not literature, but there's a there's a trend of, you know, mainly famous authors, because I guess they write a lot, Yeah. writing about how they encountered their doppelganger and something bad happening afterwards. Okay. So, like, yeah. I guess some, some John Dunn, I think. Oh, yeah. um, mm-hmm. There's this one, Percy Bush Shelley. Oh, Percy Bush Shelley, yeah, yeah, exactly. Husband of Mary Shelley. Yes. We're coming back round. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I, I told you she comes up again. Writer of um, Osmandius. Yeah. I believe so. Mm-hmm. Um, he drowned. He did, yeah. July 1822. Mm-hmm. Etched in my heart, I suppose. I didn't know he existed before him. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyways. Uh, a month after he drowned, Mary Shelley, she, I think she got an interview or she wrote a letter to somebody and she's like, he told me he saw his doppelganger uh, right oh, before he, he, okay. did, he met his doppelganger. He didn't even see him. He like shook hands. Damn. Okay. And then that guy stole his life. I guess so. Crazy. Killing, killing a fake boat, ac- boat accident. Do you believe Mary Shelley? She seems like a very dramatic character. Well, I... I, I Based I on the stories of her. Well, I can definitely believe her. Uh, a writer embellishing meeting somebody like Percy Bichelli met yeah. who kind of looked like him and then just going to be as a doppelganger in a right. letter because it sounds like a better story I mean if you were living in the 1800s and you had a journal you would have written about this incident yeah, yeah, yeah. and you've been like oh damn I saw a doppelganger yeah. and like yeah and you, you, you yeah. exaggerate a little bit and like yeah. and then the guy who died so we don't even know like who this other fellow was and how much he actually looked like Percy Bichelli it might have just so. been like even a logic connection because if something yeah. weird happened the same day and it's like voila yeah. True, true. So, and Mary Shelley kept Percy's heart afterwards. <laughs> Did she? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, she kept it, yeah. Uh, and Three. Home. Like I said, one of those golf, you know, weird things. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Anyways, the Lariosaurus, or Soro, sorry. Lariosauro. Lariosauro, from uh, Lake Como. Oh, okay. I did not know Lake Como had a cryptid going on. Yeah, Lake Como's an interesting place. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard, you know, it's interestingness? No. Well, Lake Kuma is one of the deepest lakes in Europe. Oh, it's uh, okay. it's like four hundred meters or something like that deep that because deep. uh, it's a glacial lake, which not only means it's deep, but it's also super old. Yeah, yeah, so I guess from the Alps, right? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I guess down, down there, down there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> this is a nice aid we have. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, first sighted in nineteen forty nine by a fisherman. It's a... You see the little picture here? 1949? Okay, that's Yeah, it, it's kind of late. Maybe yeah. he was, like, frozen up for a while. Like Captain America. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, it, it's some, like, Pleosaurus-looking fellow. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Called Lario. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they call him Larry for fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and his brother, Luigi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did think that when I yeah. saw the name. <laughs> but there is a... There is a... Ch- I mean, it's a glacial lake. It's super old. Yeah. It could have, you know, because one of the theories behind, like, Loch Ness Monster, it's, like, a trapped dinosaur or one of those dinosaur yeah, yeah, swimmers, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, people are like, maybe it, it could have survived in the lake, you know? Stuff settled out. You know, had a few mates to reproduce with, and now it's popping its head up every once in a while. Yeah, but also, like, it's super, like, touristy, like, almost, like, that's people are all the time. I guess so. I've yeah. not been. The found fossils nearby of, like, other like, reptilian lake monsters. Mm-hmm. So they were in the area. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually surprised I'm not heard about that one, seeing as Lake Como is quite popular. 
it's oh. also quite deep, so yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, but deep yeah. thinker. Interesting. Oh yeah, so I, I think I think the Larry Osero has to go through because I think the doppelganger I think so. is, is kind of borderline in terms of it's, it's more of an interesting concept, right? But yeah. still, it was still fun to talk about. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a it's a it's a bit different, you know. Yeah, and I wanted to have a few other cases on here. And for our last, and this was completely coincidental, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> we have the dog man versus the pig faced woman. Pig faced woman. And both are exactly how you think they are. Yes. It's a, it's a, it's these medieval drawings in like the medieval Europe. They tended, they love to draw men with the heads of dogs. Mm. But did dog people or dog men actually exist? Uh, well, there you know there was like dog boy in the P.T. Barnum circus, the guy who had right. the extreme hair growth, yep. uh, so hair all over his face. So I can see like it, one one of those medieval times sparking this idea yep. of like dog people. Uh, and if this is German, then they're probably like, what if a dog has sex with a person? <laughs> True, <laughs> comes out like that. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it just one of those fun quirks mm. where if you show this to an alien, you'd be like, oh, boy, they have ones of dog heads. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Pig-faced woman, you mentioned this one to me. Yeah, have yeah, you heard yeah. This? yeah this There's some Irishness in here, no? no? Actually, no, it was my Dutch colleague who was telling me about this. Okay. I actually hadn't heard of pig-faced woman before. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, I've heard of your mother. No. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I can we'll, we'll have to cut that down. <laughs> Ma'am, I know Go you're on. listening, but I, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Dorothy Mantu is a saint. Uh, uh, apologies to her. Well, no, seeing as you got so many jokes, why don't you tell us about the fucking pig faced woman? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it is basically just uh, this is the last one, and I almost ran out of time to do this one. But it started going around stories of pig faced women in the 1630s in, around, like, you know, Netherlands, England, France. Yeah. And it was basically some people being like, yo, that woman, she looks like she has a pig face. Oh my god. I think. And then they kept. And then they, it got to this point, especially in the 1800s, they had this pig-faced woman craze where, uh, you know, they would almost terrorize, you know, some random woman <laughs> with the press being outside <laughs> being like, I think a pig-faced woman lives in this house. Oh God, no, she's just yeah. ugly. It's fine. Guys, I, I know, and it's like, but uh, traditionally, there's more of a tradition to it too. And I, I read somewhere that was somewhat Irish where most of these pig-faced women were actually women with pig heads, and this was caused by, like, a curse or a spell put on them, right? Okay. And they would get the spell done before they got married, and then they would ask the guy marrying them, and I'll ask you this, it's just your gentlemanness. Um, would you rather have everybody else see her with a pig head or you see her with a normal head or you see her with a normal head and everybody else see her? Th- th- you know, yeah, that, yeah. that way around. Yeah, actually, yeah, this, this is the detail that my colleague mentioned to me. And, and what would you about, answer? Yeah. What would I answer? Uh, pig face for you or pig face for everyone else? <laughs> one for me, one for you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say I'd like to see her as a normal woman. Well, you would be wrong. This is not how the curse is supposed to go. You're supposed to answer, I don't care how I see her, and then the curse is broken. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Short, surely it should be more like, I don't care how other people see her. I, I think it was something like that, or like, oh, just let the woman choose however she wants. It's you one know what, of those that's, actually, that's the better answer. Yeah, I, yeah. Where it's like, it's like, I don't care about this curse whatsoever, I just love this woman I'm marrying. Yeah. This pig-faced woman, God bless her. Uh, yeah. Which one do we put forward? I uh, should do pig-faced woman. Let's do it. It has a bit more behind it, and I... Yeah, yeah. And I she, she's had a hard life, but it sounds a bit... <laughs> True. Yeah. Uh, and that marks halfway through this. Yeah. Okay, we're a bit refreshed because we, <laughs> this is a long recording, and if you're still with us, you know, thank you for, you know, enjoying us in this fun. I had a couple of Frere Rocher. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure Hannah will be happy you're digging to her stash. The Frere Rocher that I bought. Yes, thank yeah. you. <laughs> I keep, uh, when I got her, like, the flowers for Valentine's, I put them in the picture on the side, I'm like, ha. Very nice. Looks like I did it, but Very no. Nice. <laughs> thank you, yeah, Dan. Yeah. Anyways, let's move on to the next ra- next round. Now we're going to start whittling down. We'll go from a little quicker. Le Bête du Juvedon matching up against the Tutsil Worm. I think the bet has to move on. The Beast. Yeah, I think so. I, it's such a classic one. It's known so well, and there's yeah. so much mystery behind it. Because did they really kill it? Was it really a big wolf? There yeah. were even other explanations where it was a pack of wolves instead. 
That would make more sense. And yeah. there's this other really cool one. I watched some French documentary once for my French classes I was taking. Because I, I refuse to watch a normal documentary. It has to be on some weird <laughs> cryptid. And I learned a lot about this, so I'm glad I did. But that's the best thing, combined language learning with a hobby. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, yeah, anyways. Uh, some people think there might have been a serial killer involved. Yeah, I Because there were so many bodies. And I'm like, that would make sense. But they did actually see wolves they were hunting at. So maybe just a combination of all the ones. All the Our factors. serial killer was using wolves to kill people. <laughs> I think that, uh, I'm, I'm no serial killer, but I don't know if that brings the most. Uh, <laughs> Saying enough. that every serial killer says is, I'm no serial killer. I'm no serial Just killer, <laughs> but maybe you should uh, use this type of saw instead. <laughs> uh, okay, next we have, ooh, two marine-based ones. This is a good one. The Acnesis remora, the little fish that could, the little fish that could, you know? Um, versus the brush alugs, the sack of eyes. Your sack of ice, yeah. I, I don't think they call it that, but <laughs> old Isaac. Yeah, uh, I think the echinacea loses points because it's a real fish. I think so too. Yeah. I, I like the myth around it. Yeah, yeah. But I just feel like it's a way to cover up incompetence that people bought back then. <laughs> yeah, they actually left the anchor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they were like, "Oh no, it's the the fish again." It, it's like when you. Uh, like log on a little late and you're like oh no my email was lagging you know oh yeah, yeah it's like yeah. it's like the that's just oh like, my internet was there that, that's like the the first yeah. century equivalent we've of all that. been there we've oh i had a big there. i had a small fish causing my ship not to move mark Anthony was trying to tell cleopatra that and she was like yeah sure yeah yeah anyways but rush yeah. leaks i think for creativity alone i'm gonna move it on yeah you know just, what? the story could be a bit more fleshed out i feel like Mm, that's oh, yeah. true actually yeah yeah but i, I think the bar actually yeah, i think we'll we, we'll send it through and like the, the swiss have some creative ones like i was surprised well. they seem like such conservative people sometimes but they just get let loose when it comes to yeah. these creatures but they have all these cantons and stuff and i feel like that mm. kind of living you know that creates some uh and like it's all mountainous so, like yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly yeah. what really makes you think uh, moving on we have the knocking versus the Oh, Moncello? Did I say it correct this time? Moncello, I think. Moncello. I think it is, yeah. It, it sounds more like a pizza when you say it, so that prime means it's correct. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It is Naples! <laughs> I just gotta say. <laughs> I think the Nukun moves, in my opinion, I'm still gonna push it on a little bit. I think it has a bit more of flavor behind it. It's a bit different than what we saw. It's a very established myth. Yeah, like there's there's something like both beautiful and deadly about it, like the, the, especially the horse version. Yeah, uh, I think that that and the, the music it plays, like the Moncello, just is just a, it's a, a good a, story. A weird little guy. I think for a regional tale, like if we were doing mm -hmm. a tale about like you know city legends or stuff like that, mm -hmm. I definitely think well, it's like worth the Golem. It. You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm spoiling a future podcast. Maybe that's like I don't know. I, I think yeah. city legends is. I, I did enough research to try to find these <laughs> goddamn cryptids. <laughs> You know how many American ones are out there? We could do like fifty per state if we wanted to. But yeah, yeah, God. Americans have too much free time. Yeah. Anyways, uh, uh, yeah, you know, what? yeah, I think that's fine. I think Let's it's gallop it's on into the next know. round because <laughs> it's ours. <laughs> it's gonna go pretty far away in this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Great, <laughs> good one. Uh, anyway, uh, and then your two favorite prints, the Darhu and the Elvitrich. Darhu, Darhu, Darhu. C H there. <laughs> who? I can't yeah. do CHs. You know, you, you're preying on my weaknesses here. My even my though, my linguistic Dutch, deficiencies. Even though yeah. he's Dutch, eh? Oh, so we can't do CHs as Dutch people. That's yeah, one of the things. Yeah, huh. but that's the G. It's all But this is different to us, you know. Come on. Okay. Right. Anyways. Uh you should respect my different accents. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the, versus the Elvitrich. 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 Yeah. I love the Elvitrich story. It's so cute. And I like breasts, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> can't fault me for that. <laughs> hey, I'm no serial killer. <laughs> I, I like sucking in breasts on a chicken. I was going to yeah. say. I, I do think the Dober Shoe? Dober Who? Dober Who. Yeah. Dober. It's like, it's like D O U R, like Dober. Dober Who. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll accept it. I do think it's <laughs> pretty cool. Accept it. And they live in pairs. I like anything that lives in pairs, that mates for life. I think that adds something to it. It's, it appeals to my humanistic tendencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The monogamy of it all. Yeah, I, I, I can, I can see that too. And uh, yeah, like the fact that, like, if you are a fisherman and if you take some of its skin on board, your boat will not sink. 
Damn. Yeah. There you go. So it's got magical yeah. properties. You just got to get some skin first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and also Leitrim is involved in the story. Leitrim never gets any love. Leitrim? Leitrim. That's where the, the story happened. I told ah, you. okay. Yeah. It's the smallest county in Ireland by population. Fair enough. Well, yeah. we, we stand here for representing the underlings. You know? Exactly, yeah. So shout out to Leitrim. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the Elf to Kitch, I think the, the, the breasts are, are, are making more comfortable as time goes on. I think, I think they were cool. Uh, I think King Adder. Uh, I'll, I'll move. I think it's a better cryptid. Yeah. I think it's a, a funny story, the other one. Yeah, yeah. It seems like something I would do to my brothers. Be like, ooh, look, there's something <laughs> in the forest. <laughs> there, yeah. For, for the Wolperting, I forgot to mention, there was this thing where you can catch it if you can drop some salt on his tail. Oh, okay. That's specific. Which, when you think about, yeah, but also, if you drop salt on his tail, you can grab the tail as well. You know, yeah, if yeah, you're close, close enough. enough yeah, yeah. True, yeah, And I this was pointed true. out to me once because... We had some rabbits on our farm in Canada, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Ooh, can I catch one?" And, my, and I'm like asking my dad when I was like ten years old, like, "How do I catch it?" And I remember him telling me, "Oh, you just put some salt on the tail." And I go inside to my mom, like, "Yo, can I have some salt?" <laughs> and she's like, "To do what?" And she's like, "No, you could just grab it then if you uh, have <laughs> rabbit stuff." <laughs> yeah, but I, I got taken advantage of that. Myth. I need to go to the Vancouver farm sometime. <laughs> if you're in Canada, let me know. I, I, I gotta go. I gotta go. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, Dutch flying jellyfish versus the Strigoi. Uh, yeah, the Dutch flying jellyfish. Uh, yeah, like it's, it's kind of not like a true cryptid in a way because it's kind of like it's more in the kind of UFO kind of area. Yep, yeah, I mean know. it's it is an unidentified flying object. Yes. it's just not. It could be an alien ship. Yeah, but it most likely. It's a random sky jellyfish, you know? That's the thing, yeah. And it just seems like... An atmospheric jellyfish. Is what versus, like, see, <clears throat> like a land-based creature, that's actually going to be, like, a real animal that you might mistake for something else. Whereas, yeah. like, that could just be, like, yeah, light or, like, a meteorological phenomenon. So, yeah. it's... And, the, again, I feel like its narrative doesn't go beyond the second round. Yeah? yeah exactly, yeah. There isn't a compelling <coughs> story behind it. It's just more just... Just some guy who got out there, People shot a picture. Seen it. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the study guy, at least, there's a whole like yeah, like set of like rules around it, and like this and whole they had it. It was a top. big scare in like Romania and all the yeah, areas yeah, where they yeah, have these yeah. specific death customs, where you know to ward yeah. off them coming back as vampires and yeah, like you, you'd have people buried with like stakes yeah. driven through them, and people with like chained up as well and everything. So like yeah, it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty common fear across Europe, like people who come back from the dead. Do you think that there's something we do now in our current burial customs that people will look back in 200 years and be like, why? Hmm, that's a good question. I think maybe... As I move on to Strigoi. Uh, yeah. I think maybe the fact of even just burying people, people might find it weird. I would like to be buried. I yeah. I, I, but, but not in a box. I just want to be like dumped naked in a hole <laughs> and then decomposed <laughs> back to where I came from. Just carried over someone's shoulder. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I've, yeah, yeah. And that's my, if, yeah, I, if I die, you know, take, yeah. just let this be my uh, testament, but yeah. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe in terms of, like, space and stuff, they'll think, like, God, what a waste, like, yeah. they should just burn to everyone. Or do they maybe the cremation's weird, I don't know. Yeah, polluting. Yeah, that's <laughs> it, yeah, I guess, like, cremation is, like, depends on your culture, too. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway. let's move on to the Leshy versus the Loch Ness Monster. I think this is a, two gentle giants. Mm-hmm. There's a cool, I don't know... You know all the Loch Ness lore. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there was this one where it was spotted in, I think, the early 1800s or 1900s and one of the first moderns. Oh, no. I think one of the first sightings whatsoever in the 500s. Yeah. This, this bishop came out or this uh, I think it might be saint. Irish saint. Was saint, yes. Yeah, saint Columbo, yeah. I believe his name was. Uh, <laughs> saint Columbo. But Saint Columbo is the one who solves mysteries. Is that, that's the other guy. I, I don't know this. <laughs> Say about Peter Falk. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, apparently he saw this monster just like lounging on the beach, and he was like, "Be gone, beast! Get back in!" Mm-hmm. And the thing's like, "Okay," and then he goes back in the water. Yeah. Just put yeah. a cigarette before he went back in. Like, <laughs> He's like, oh, fine, yeah. <laughs> the funniest ones are the ones where he's seen on land. Yeah, 
there was this other thing I was seeing where uh, right after, like, the in the 1930s, when there was some new sightings of Loch Ness Monster, mm-hmm. they sent some, like, renowned, like, monster hunter to go, like, see what was up. Yeah. And he found some tracks, which they quickly discovered were just umbrella prints <laughs> that he stomped into the oh, ground. dude, stop. <laughs> which, That's so embarrassing. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, and the Leshy, then. The Leshy, I don't know if you have anything to add on that. Not much. I, I'm sure if I was Slavic or, or if you were, would have a bit more, you know, local stories to tell about it. Mm. I just like that he speaks for the trees, you know? He does, mm. yeah. And do we know that he inspired the Lorax? I don't think so. I think okay. the Lorax is a very... And I always liked the Lorax. I had a soft spot for that story. Yeah, but Dr. Seuss, I guess, was what, like German descent. So maybe, you know, he could have been inspired by something. Uh, Neck of the Woods. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, his knows? real name wasn't Seuss, though. Yeah, so. it was Theodore Geisel. It's also German. True. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Anyway. I think the Loch Ness Monster. Know. I know it's a cliche one, but that's where my vote goes. I it, think, yeah, that's the same Drew Nessie. Yeah. Leshy, it's it's cute. Leshy versus Nessie. Leshy versus yeah. Nessie. You mentioned that, didn't you? I didn't know. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, wow. Look at this Irish pony <laughs> set up. Fairies versus Leprechauns. Irish Derby, lads. I didn't Irish notice Derby. this coming up. Damn. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. I did well. I got all. I got all three of mine true. So I'm pretty happy. For once. For once. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're reversing the early trend on these episodes. Uh, I feel like the fairies have more of like a, an important place in Irish culture. Than I just Leprechaun. don't like fairies. I don't like it's the idea a- of them. I don't like their biting. I don't like their. <laughs> What's the biting? They don't bite people. Why they have like fangs, no? I, but like sharp teeth. I'm not sure if it's all teeth that you're going out of it. Maybe they do. I don't know. But like. Maybe they had a nightmare once or something. But I, <laughs> I have a distinct, you know. When I think of fairies, I think of how they can bite. Like I've, I've seen some like cartoon or some movie where this little fairy creature turns evil and. You know? Yeah, like maybe. But like Irish fairies, I don't think. I, I think they're more like putting curses on people and that kind of right. stuff. Like physically attacking. I guess I wouldn't want to be cursed either. Humans. Uh, <laughs> Although interesting. Like interesting little story was uh, I remember hearing this Irish author speaking uh, about his uh, about his mother so mm-hmm. growing up in like 60s 50s 60s in, in Donegal uh, so in the north of Ireland and uh, when his mother was like washing like clothes or washing like dishes uh, you know you'd have like a tub of water yeah. and then after you'd throw it out and she would make sure to stop wait look both ways and kind of like announce that she was trying to water before doing it because if you just haphazardly threw the water out, out the window or at the front door yeah. and, and you caught some elves or sorry some fairies you would be in big trouble mm. so again that's just this idea like it kind of it adds this layer of caution to everything that you do like to not right. upset the fairies right uh, and that's, yeah that's cool. I, I mean in Canada when we threw out the water from uh, you know mopping up the floor my mm-hmm. mom would also pay a lot of attention where to throw it because we flew it on a walk it would freeze over and become ice that's a, yeah that is a cleaning concern to be fair yeah, yeah but, uh, leprechauns are also interesting uh, but I, I think fairies uh, like the fairy forts are, are still a thing you yeah. know, and like they're still referenced uh, and like in terms of where they fit into like the mythology of like the two of the Danon and uh, like the you know rivalry of humans and stuff I find that very interesting so personally yeah. I, I would go for fairies I like the picture we have here of this guy just being like but this fairies around him just dancing and singing I can just uh-huh. see him being like just shut up <laughs> that's his well, impression all because he's like <laughs> if, if I if I stay here the fairies are gonna like kill me ah uh, right or they're gonna like turn me blind or something <laughs> yeah so, yeah so. so sorry leprechauns but yeah fairies going through the Lario Soro versus the pig faced woman. Ooh, pig faced woman! Did you know that Lario Soro, Lake Humo, is close to a town called Nesso? Like, oh, like a Loch Ness? Oh my god. And I will say, it might be suspicious that they first saw it in 49 after the media buzz of the. Of the Loch Ness. Mm, they but just wanted a bit of that sweet, sweet Loch Ness yeah. money. I do think it's a good location to hide a extinct sea creature, Lake Kumo. Yeah, like the depths, like yeah. yeah. It adds something to me. It adds it adds some depth yeah. to the story, if they would say. <laughs> Sorry, it's getting late. Oh, this gotta be my excuse. Mm, so, yeah. I, I think the Lario Soro should go on. 
I think it's funny. It's cute. It eats fish. Yeah, the pig face woman. I apparently made the wrong decision. So I. I yeah, I, you're you're, you're cursed to having a yeah. wife with a pig's face. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Okay, Lario. Lario. It's a me, Lario. <laughs> Saudo. Uh. Okay, quarterfinals then. Quarterfinals, yeah. yeah. First match of these quarters, Le Bet de Juvedon, making it through again. Okay. There's the Bourges Alix. Mm, okay. Yeah, two very different creatures. Although both like harmful to humans. Yeah. One has more kills. And I go by Confirmed kills. Yes, I go by quantity over quality <laughs> here. You know, I'm a stats person. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we don't know how many people the Baratcha set in fire, so... Yeah. Know, yeah. Really Plus, it's, a, it's a, half these pictures of the bet are just this, like, most dilapidated-looking cute dog. <laughs> Where yeah, it's it, like, it is a very <laughs> silly drawing. Like, the tail is super fluffy and long. And there's um, sillier ones. Oh, I'm sure there yeah. are. I'm and sure then there's also are. these more, you know... No pointy looking like medieval drawings, you know, the, they look all teethy and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and I just still like, are a bit wonky. Like, yeah. yeah, but this one just looks like if I saw that in somebody's house, I'd be like, What a cute animal! <laughs> he, oh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you know how many people that thing's killed? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's working for a serial killer, so you can't trust him. Did I tell you about when it actually got killed, like what they thought to be the real one? Um, so there was a local who shot him and, and went to Versailles. No, no, that was the first one who okay. was who was like, "Yo, King, I did it! I finally killed him!" And then oh, okay. killings resume. Anyway, and this guy was like, "Yo, I got it! I shot him!" And the locals were like, "Great!" And then they're like, "Maybe you should go to Versailles with it and show the king." So he's like, "Okay, let me get the body taxidermy because you know you gotta do that to transport the body." Mm-hmm. And he, he makes, makes his sense. way as a poor person all the way to Versailles to show off this beast to the king. And uh, Louis, I think it was a sec- XP or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he he actually gets an audience. Louis takes one look at the thing and he leaves because uh, apparently the taxidermy job was super bad and it smelled like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Sorry, though. No, they used to shit in the halls of Versailles. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't realize they were getting so fancy with smell yeah. all of a sudden. Well, maybe he's really hated bad taxidermy. I mean, I, I think I would too. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's no fate worse than being a bad taxidermy thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I have the most sympathy for animals who got taxidermied with, like, their eye, like, two centimeters off, yeah, like, yeah. should be. L- like that meme of the monkey sitting down. Yeah. Yeah, like, with that, that kind of poor fate. That's, like, the yeah. one thing I... I don't know why I'm going to what I want to happen after I die. But do not taxidermy. <laughs> do and not do ta- not... <laughs> do not taxidermy me poorly. <laughs> yeah, it's just you're naked and drop me all yeah. these. Come on. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the, the Nakan and the Derafu. Two deadly creatures... Two deadly creatures, yeah, in different ways. Uh, the the beautiful horse and the vicious otter, or uh, otter esque creature. We actually don't. It's not really quite an otter. It's kind of complicated. We mentioned Saint Columbo, Columba, Columba, yeah. Columba. Columbo again is the guy with the TV detective. I, I don't know it's Columbo. But <laughs> you did, you didn't grow up with much culture. I did no. <laughs> I grew up trying to hunt rabbits unsuccessfully, <laughs> but uh. Anyway, the Saint Saint Columba, he actually figures into the, the, the Doborshu story as well. Okay. Because uh, apparently when he, some like spin-offs of the Loch Ness story have it, when he tells it to go away back into the water, mm-hmm. it literally goes away and goes to Ireland and reproduces. Oh. And that's where the Doborshu comes from. I, I also read that like it's, that there was a giant species of otter the size of a wolf. Which existed yeah, at one point. Yeah, that's not false. Uh, ex- yeah. except, except the problem is that the fossils were found in China, so <laughs> I don't really know yeah. what, how, how that how that worked. It uh, but it, it's, it's fine. precedent. Yeah, uh, sure. Like maybe maybe we'll, we'll uncover giant otter fossils at some point in Ireland. Who knows? Should we put a Dober shoe forward? I, I think Nokun, This is a strong competition. Yeah. I, it's it's up to you. I, I personally lean slightly towards Dokken because I, I do think it's a quite a nice story. It, it's very mm. Nordic inspired, but uh, I, I wouldn't be mad either way. And I think otters are cute. So I like otters, okay. even if they have killed a woman, <laughs> multiple women. <laughs> we we know one woman, and her name was was Gronia. Gronia. Yeah, just mm. it's impo- it's important to you know to say the, these victims' names when time comes. <laughs> Uh, Gronya Connolly, Gronya Nichinila. There you go. I've never, I've never met a Gronya. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's, it's, not, it's not the most common name. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a couple of knocking around. Yeah. 
<laughs> Sorry. That was good. That, that was, was good. good. That, that was, was good. good. Yeah. Uh, Strigoi? Strigoi? I'm wondering if it's not Strigoi. Because <laughs> they are Romanian. Is. It's definitely Strigoi. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <oof. laughs> and uh, Loch Ness Monster. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Loch Ness. Yeah. Loch Ness Monster. God, yeah. This is a tough one, too. Yeah. I'm going to push Nessie forward. I just think there's so much in that. It's it's the classic one. If it doesn't make the quarters or the semi, if it, it doesn't is. make the semis, okay. and I, the vampires are cool and all, but they've been very, I feel like they've been taken over a lot by popular culture. Yeah, yeah, like there there is it's been bastardized and twisted and like there, there hasn't been any movies really with the Loch Ness monster. I was gonna say I've never seen a bad Loch Ness monster movie, but I haven't seen a good one either. So. Yeah, like you feel like there there, there should be more like the yeah. Scottish. Film boards, so we should really invest in that. Yeah, yeah. Instead of all these Harry Potter movies, mm-hmm. you know, a waste of yeah. money and train spotting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I personally prefer the vampire because it, it tells us more about like humans and our approach right. to like death and stuff. Uh, I don't know. Do we do we want to rock versus scissors it? Let's do it because I'm I I just like I would just, I would love there to be an ancient dinosaur still alive in the water somewhere. It yeah. captivates me, and in fact, you can go and look. Sp- you can't go hunting for vampires. It seems like a terrible idea. No, you can, but I'll sing. I guess so. I don't know. Let, let's do the rock paper scissors. Okay, so rock paper scissors shoes. Yeah. Okay. Rock paper scissors shoes. <sighs> look, it's a big sea monster. Like, like Bart Simpson, good old rock. <laughs> so predictable. Uh, anyway. Okay. So lo- Loch Ness monster is through. It's locked semis. in. God, we are on fire. We're on fire today. Yeah. Fairies versus the Lariosaurus. We can't have Lariosaurus get through. What? Or Lariosaurus. Soro, come on. Don't disrespect the... Lariosaurus. Lariosaurus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, if we said... Lock this monster through. Yeah, but <sighs> imagine the matchup. I still think we should have sent that Swedish thing for you. That thing is cool. Oh my God, you're obsessed <laughs> with lake-based creatures. We get it. <laughs> Uh, I held back. I did not include that many in this list. And they just yeah, all, and yeah. they happen to fall on the same side. Mm. So yeah, true. Yeah, uh, yeah. Personally, I would go with fairies again. Larry Osaro. Larry just feels like a Loch Ness ripoff to me. I, I did appreciate the culture you put behind the fairies of the explaining mm-hmm. like mental disability because it is something that you don't see explained. Like it, it's a part of life, right? Yeah. And I, I haven't seen that many other cultures really explain it in such a way. Yeah. For better or worse, you know. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I think like fairies are a good like catch all in. In, in an Irish kind of culture, like going back a long time, and the fact that these beliefs persisted long after the country was Christianized, right? Uh, that people just you know believe what they believed, and they kind of just kept on being pagan in some ways, but uh, went to church every Sunday. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, and uh, now we're down to four. Yes, I'm yeah. gonna have a bit of a weird resolution here because my again my screen is different than the one I used in the previous episodes. That's but the uh, on one side, the left side of the bracket, Le Bete de Jivedo, mm-hmm. this is the Dobershu. Mm-hmm. Dobershu. Dowerhu. Dowerhu. Yeah. I always got the owl in there. Yeah, gosh. I think Sour. Yeah. Yeah. Dower. Yeah. Dower. And on the right hand side, it's the Loch Ness Monster versus Fairies. Yeah. See a very uh, Irish theme in here. <laughs> yeah, that happened. That's crazy. And yeah. the only Irish when I got knocked out was knocked out by another Irish thing. So <laughs> I'm just a great storyteller. That's what it is. Us, us Irish yeah. people, we're, we're great at telling stories. So. But do you think that the story of the Dowerhu is greater than the story of the Beth the Yeah, see, you know, the problem is that the has come up uh, a better version of itself. We're talking about, like, kill accounts. Right. Like, the, the Dowerhu has killed people, but, like, it's kind of not really... Again, it's not like super well established, like a lot of it is, is oral mm-hmm. tradition, and unfortunately, there's things that I don't have access to yeah. uh, using, you know, the humble Google search. Uh, whereas the bit de, de, de Gévaudan is like a whole story, and it's like, it, it, it is a very interesting narrative. And this idea that, like, again, that maybe it was actually a person, yeah. and instead, I don't know, the community decided to blame a wolf. True. They're trying to protect somebody. Yeah, you know, could have been someone noble in the area, yeah, who was a maniac, but they just covered it up by saying it was a wolf instead because yeah. a wolf is an easier target. Like that's also an interesting story in itself. And I also think it's interesting that it really highlights 
almost the lack of presence that the monarchy had in the area mm -hmm. where it took them so long to even send people when they yeah. sent it they were completely out of touch with the needs of the local mm -hmm. population and yeah. they bandaged up the solution and the problem kept continuing because mm -hmm. it, it really speaks of it to like you know how centralized centralized yeah. but also how desperate it must be to be in that situation because mm. I, I mean sure you're being terrorized by a large wolf that must not happen to every community mm. but, but there are way, means, like the real terror is monarchy Yes, except the Kabouter Coney. But yeah. Well, of course, King uh, Kerry. Yeah, King Kerry was a, he was a got saint. A lot of know. time for him. Yeah. Who needs Willem Alexander Marikos? Yes. Or whatever daughter he's lined up next. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to. I think for the my book, The I Bet. Yeah, yeah, Bet. Yeah. It's such a cute thing, too. Anyways. Loch Ness Monster versus Fairies. I think you know how I feel. Mm. Look, I just think the Loch Ness Monster, I think, yeah, it's a fun story, but it kind of got out of hand. Right. Like, just, it's, I think a lot of people have exploited it. Whereas I think fairies, people don't, don't use it as a money spinner in, in, right. in the same way. It's, it, 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 it's really? there, it's there in the culture. Have you never seen a Disney movie? <laughs> no, I'm on about, about Irish. Right? So I know what you mean. I'm on about Untaste She. That's what I'm on about, like the real fairies. There's uh, nobody running a, a fairy camp or fairy colony. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You see, like the leprechauns kind of lost some marks because Kevin Woods has cashed in a bit too much. Single handedly, him. yeah. Oh, also, yeah, his name is McQuilta. That's his stage name. McQuilta? Yeah, Quilta means like woods in Irish. Ugh. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I would go with fairies. I would go to Ashe. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll accept it. I, I think for the Loch Ness monster, it's almost. It's also, I, I think it's, it's it's a classic one, mm -hmm. but I think that we explained or, for like the purposes of the video and the story we're painting here. Yeah. I think we're talking a bit better about the fairies, and to really do the Loch Ness monster justice, it's a whole exploration of its own video. Like it, yeah, it should yeah. be an hour and a half long topic we can just talk about on its own. Yeah. Not in this free hour podcast. So apologies <laughs> for you who are suffering for this. <laughs> I like how we're telling them. We recorded so much content, but we didn't record enough to talk about the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just come back for part two, guys. It's okay. Uh, I'm going to move no. fairies on. Thank you. But as we get into the final, the finals, Le Bête de Givedon versus fairies. And she. My, my, I think my whole inclination for this bracket, I didn't really realize until we sat down, it has been towards Le Bête de Givaudot. I think it's an amazing story. That was as the first one we started with as well. Yeah, I, I think ironically it actually, yeah, that worked I, out. I, I can't believe it was the old man. <laughs> I, <can't remember. laughs> I, I feel like Owl Man would have pushed past the few others. <laughs> Owl Man it was, it's just like the funny one he had to beat us to start, you know, just like the real oh. weak boss. I think yeah. it's quaint, you know? Goofy little guy. Uh, mm, yeah, look, I, I'm willing to concede on the bit of Jérôme because also you, you spun a little narrative there that I liked about like France and yeah, the, the I, monarchy and stuff, which was good. I normally don't... I normally am not nice enough to the French. So <laughs> if I have, you ever catch me making a mean-spirited joke about the French <laughs> again, I can just tell you, yo, I, I let your serial killer wolf Mais regarde, j'ai choisi yeah. le bête de Jovedon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I know there's some good things that come out of your bloody nation. So. And you know, actually, I'm happy that the AC got to the final. I wasn't expecting fairies to get that far. So I, I'm willing to I think concede on things the considered, the fairies had a bit of a easier run, maybe, I want to say. I mean, they had to ward off the Loch Ness Monster and yeah. the other lake monsters. Yeah. That's not nothing. True. Yeah, yeah. Especially the way, you, yeah, you and your lake monsters, man. The Ogopogo. Uh, the Ogopogo Lake. Ogopogo. What do they call them? Augie or Poggy? Probably, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, back in Canada. It'd be great to do a North American one, but... Not, it's not this podcast, though. Yeah, maybe yeah. one day. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. What do we think of doing for next topic? God, that's a great question. I don't know. We've I wanted think... to do national paintings for a while. Yeah, paintings. That, that, that's that been one that's kind of been percolating. Yeah. Uh, Emblem, national coat of arms I want to do. I know it's a bit more cliche, but I think it's every country is represented. It's a nice yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. that. Or, you know, if, if you have any thoughts, uh, yeah. then let us know. Uh, if you see us walking in the street, just yell them at us. 
or uh, just uh, hey, it's those conspiracy theory guys <laughs> from the respected Brussels-based yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah, or you know, you can comment on LinkedIn or on the YouTube video as well. Yeah, and yeah, because this definitely cool. will make a prime appearance in my LinkedIn feed. <laughs> Yeah, only the best. Only yeah. the best. It'll be on me anyway. <laughs> yeah, but if you did like, I think this is going to be a, a pretty lengthy recording. So mm -hmm. thank you for sticking around towards the end. Do leave a like, subscribe. Let us know if you ever want to see us do something like this again, as we're hinting towards. Mm -hmm. And stick around for the next one, which might take a little longer because somebody's going to the other side of the world. So what can I say? What can yeah. I say? I'm an exotic kind of guy now. Well, au revoir. J'adore cet episodio. Yeah. Slant Tamil. Well, till next time. <laughs>